Friends, welcome to Hobby Titans for another very special live stream. Tonight, uh, my name is Brett, and I'm joined by one of the few. Uh, one of the, <laughs> I'm joined by one of the few true Renaissance men. He is a tactician, <laughs> a artist. He is an entertainer, and he's an all-around good guy. I am, of course, talking about the man to my right, Adrian Phillips. How are you doing, Adrian? I'm doing great, Brad. Thanks for having me on. Welcome to the show. Yeah. <laughs> You're great. It's great to have you. I'm super excited to be here today. Uh, super excited to talk about my favorite Green Boys. It is Orc Week, and Woo! we're going to be painting some orcs tonight. Yeah. Thank you, all of you, for joining us. Uh, Adrian, you ready? I'm so ready. You have no idea. I am really, really excited. I love orcs. They're my favorite army, my favorite, favorite faction all the arm, in all the games, and I'm going to paint them today. Awesome. It's exciting. Let's get creative. All right, so let's take a look at um, the Orc Boys. Really excited to be playing, uh, sorry, painting. It's, uh, this is different for me. Painting uh, the Orcs today. Uh, right on the screen there, you can see one of the brand new Beast Snaggas. Uh, and I'm really excited about these new models for a number of reasons. They're just gorgeous sculpts, and they just highlight everything that I love about Orcs. They're, they're cool, they're wacky, they're zany, they're colorful, they have tons of different materials, and just a really, really strong sense of humor that is not always the easiest thing to find in the grim darkness of the far future. So uh, today we're going to be talking about these models right here, the brand new Beast Snaga Boys in particular, and uh, be walking through how to paint a number of things. We'll talk about orc skin, we'll talk about painting orange, which has been a, a thing uh, discussed lately, and we'll also discuss how to paint the infamous blue squig hide. Uh, let's take it away. All right, yeah, so this is really exciting. These are brand new models. They are, yeah. Uh, and your <laughs> orcs have been featured on uh, Tabletop Titans for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Everyone always comments on how amazing they are. <laughs> oh, and for those of you who like sort of see the speed with which you crank out a yeah. unit, <laughs> like the fact that you're able to achieve this level of quality in mm. as short of time as you do is really impressive. Yeah, thank you. So hopefully, uh, I'm going to pick up some of that tonight. Hopefully, all Absolutely. of you guys will catch, uh, pick up on some of these tips and tricks for for cranking out a big mm. unit of boys. Because if if nothing, like you need a lot of boys in an orchestra. You need a ton of boys, and the beast snaggers are no exception. The max squad is only 20. It's not 30, so not so bad, right? Um, but regardless, uh, the orcs are an army that I've had for a long, long, long time. And I'll be honest, they spent a lot of their lifetime half painted, not painted, whatever, until I started learning how to airbrush. And uh, over time, I've kind of perfected, at least for me personally, my, my, my level that I, I wanted to get to for painting them, um, methods of painting them quickly and nicely, and kind of in stages that I could like play them, they would look nice, and then I could kind of finish up on them later on. Yeah, no, this is great. So um, we are starting here. You, we've pre-assembled these. Mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm. primed. And corked and up. And corked up, and we're going to go from uh, five. We have five boys here yep. uh, that we're ready to paint tonight, and hopefully by the end of this live stream, we're going to have five painted boys ready so. for the tabletop. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get started. That's what's what's step one? So uh, step one, first of all, when, when I uh, airbrush, I want to make it as efficient as possible, right? So this means that we want to hit the big areas first and, and be as inaccurate as yep. possible, narrow those down, and get to the parts where we have to be more and more accurate bit by bit. So we're going to be doing all the airbrush of the skin first, followed by the airbrush of the pants, and lastly followed by the airbrush of all the squig hide. After that, we just wash the whole thing and then go into detail work, which is um, actually a lot of fun. These models have a lot of little tiny bits, but yeah. they're actually in many ways less punishing than the original Orc Boys that have tons of like extra straps. These guys have like one strap, it's easily separated. So painting the details is actually not, uh, it's not so arduous. I actually find it to be really, really fun. I like it. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. Are there two of these that you want me to take? Uh, you can pick any two <laughs> I get my you want. choice. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a... Uh... I will say I actually will reserve one because we may or may not do an extra technique. I'll reserve this boy, okay, and then you can pick any other two. All right, I want this guy, mm. and I'm gonna take these two here. Cool, sounds great. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So yeah, these are built. They're primed up. As you guys will notice, they're off of their bases, and we'll talk a bit about, more about bases later on because that's another another big part about um, working on them. And uh, here we go. 
So what we're going to do first is we're going to start off with uh, the base layer. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of undercoating. Undercoating is a really important technique that is doubly, doubly important for the kinds of paints that I use because many of them are very, very transparent, very translucent. So first off, we're just going to start off with some nice white. Today we have, uh, this is just dead, dead white from Vallejo Game Air, of course, Vallejo. And, uh, but you can use anything, honestly. I'll use like a bone white sometimes. You can use any brand. I'm not super, super particular about yep. it. The only thing is that as long as it's a bright, kind of whitish color, uh, so we're just going to take a few drops into our airbrushes and uh, we're going to get started. So we're going to be focusing largely on the skin. Um, I also recommend uh, we have these kind of big flat areas on the sides of, the, of their axes essentially. I don't know if we can uh, yeah. see this a bit closer. Um, these areas here, so we'll want to also hit those up with some of this, uh, this spray paint. And for most of these shoulder pads, I think we'll also hit them with the white, uh, pretty pretty um, concentrated in fashion, because we're going to go ahead and do the orange there. So yeah. uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, so these are just prime black, right? Just <laughs> prime black. We're using uh, that uh, airbrush primer, which I tried the for the first time today. The airbrush primer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want me to sort of hit this from the top? Yeah, so you, well, you can hit it largely all around, but slightly yeah. more concentrated from the top. So I will generally start from the top, and oh, I don't think this sticky tack is staying. Um, I'm just gonna hold it like this on this boy. This is the, this is the guy that's standing on one leg, so he's not gonna hold. So I'm just gonna hit it largely from the top, like th like so. And so this is gonna make it the, be the most concentrated. This is kind of the the zenithal highlighting, as as people call it. Really, that just means that you're highlighting it so it's brighter on the top, fading down. And are there specific areas you want me to focus on? We're really focusing on the skin, so we're gonna okay. get the head, the arms. Uh, if you get any bleed over, it's absolutely no problem at all. Um, and unlike a lot of zenithal highlighting, we're actually going to try to have no pure black at all in this model. Um, so it's going to be that most concentrated from the top, but go ahead and kind of start also rotating the model, get everything at least to like a dark, a dark white, if such a thing exists. Um, With a little extra emphasis on the skin. Exactly. And, and then a little ex extra on, on the top of the skin in particular. So we're just hitting up all these areas here. This guy's looking pretty solid. All right, let me see him. Yeah, Got so that's it. him. Got it. You know, we're basically painting the whole thing white, but just a brighter white uh, on the top of the model, uh, the top of him. Um, because what we're going to be doing, I'll just explain this right now before we get there, is we're going to be doing a orange from the bottom moving up, and then the green from the top coming down. And the green is a pretty strong paint; it can kind of handle its own. But the orange is so translucent that when we come from the bottom, it's, it doesn't take really well to black. It's not actually not going to take well at all. So we want to make sure we, we have color on the bottom regardless. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on to this boy. And we can be pretty um, egregious, to be honest, just to get a ton of paint there. We're almost repriming this model in a way. Yeah. I just, I prefer to have the black base. Um, if anything gets missed, it just looks like shadow. It's easier to work with. And, I agree. Um, I, used to, I used to prime yeah. gray. Uh -huh. um, oh, great! Interesting. And that was that was basically what I found is that oh, I, I, there's a lot more pressure to make sure you get a base coat on yes. every single part of the model because if you miss a spot, and it, it, it looks unpainted. It looks so bad otherwise. Exactly. So again, getting pretty bright here. Make sure I don't have any pure black. There we go. There we go. Okay, looking good. How's your boys looking? How are your boys looking? Oh, uh, good. Getting ahead. <laughs> there we are. This shoulder pad, I know I want to do black, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is. Most of the shoulder pads. Oh, you want me to leave the shoulder pads black? We'll, uh, we'll paint over that one. Okay. That's all right. Um, most of them have uh, like a, a kind of icon sigil, like a skull thing on them. Yeah. And those ones will definitely be doing orange with yep. a white skull on top. Okay. Uh, but these nice big flat ones, right. um, we, can, we can do them black. But you know, that's orc, so you can take your pick. There's no right. real uniform here for them. All right. And you can go ahead and uh, clear that paint out. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and prep for the next step, I guess. Excellent. I'm taking two of these tonight because I'm almost certainly gonna be a little bit slower than Adrian since this <laughs> is his recipe. Mm. Um, watched him paint up the sample orc this afternoon for the thumbnail. Right. And it was amazing. <laughs> when you're when you're not talking through it, yeah, yeah. You're you're a machine when Thank it comes you. to painting this Thank stuff. You. It is very impressive. It's something I am very 
proud of, to be honest. Um, I, I feel like I am able to quickly paint to the level that I, I want. Yeah. Right? And that's something to, important to kind of determine when you're painting is like, what's what's your goal? Are you trying to do a golden demon winning model? Right. Are you trying to paint up a, a whole army and odds are you're gonna have a, a whole bunch more armies coming yeah. after it? And just kind of mediate that, yeah? I, what's looking for? Yeah, I was thinking about grabbing a different um, piece of foam for my mm. boys here. But oh, I yeah. think I'll, I'll just use the same one. There's a little slab down there if you want. Um, no, it's, it's fine. I'll just stick 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 my boys in here. <laughs> Sounds good. Get them boys. All right. All right. That's looking good. So we've got the white on uh, the skin. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit it up with one of my favorite colors. This is Vallejo Model Air orange. Not the sponsor of today's episode, unfortunately, but we're working on it. Uh, <laughs> we'll get there. We're working on it. It will make an appearance. Exactly. Vallejo, if you're watching, pay no attention to the Reaper paints behind. We would gladly <laughs> swap them. <laughs> so here's the orange. Go ahead and take some of that. Okay. Just a few drops. And uh, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing... I, so zenithal highlighting, zenithal highlighting comes from the top. It's like the zenith of the sun, right? It's when it's at its peak. I don't know what the opposite of that is, but that's what we're going to be that's doing. That's what we're doing? So yeah, we, hit, we did white from the top, Yep. now we're doing orange from, from the, bottom. the bottom. It's going to be almost like a glow. Um, yeah. And it's not like a lighting glow, but it's going to give us a bit of an orangey yeah. undertone. Yeah. So again, I'll make sure I've got some pink coming out. And we're just going to hit it from the bottom. And I think, don't be afraid to have it be pretty concentrated, honestly. Like I said, this green color is pretty powerful, so it will absolutely override the orange where we want it to. All right, and then, so it's very much from the bottom now. I'm just gonna tilt it up just ever so slightly. So we get almost this, you can see there's almost like this lighting for the face. Do, 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 something like that. So, hopefully that gives you a sense. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It looks good, yeah. Sweet, and then uh, we'll just uh, we'll just give it a go on the next boy and the next boy. Now, this is also a time for the shoulder pads that we did want to be orange. We can also naturally cover those in okay. orange paint. Um, and this is where these Beast Naga models are amazing because they have these big kind of swaths of muscle that really catch the lighting from underneath. Um, so you can see even there, like that's really, really popping already. And we're, we're kind of almost getting like an OSL lighting. This is like they're sitting around a campfire. Yes, exactly. Standing over the campfire. Standing over the campfire, uh, that's right. And the body of their enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. There we go, there we go. And you're going for hands as well? Hands as well, so the whole thing. Hands are easy to miss. Um, you'll just kind of forget them in the gun. In fact, I don't have this one. Very good, very good. And get my last boy here. Yeah, and so because we sort of directionally put the white from the top, the bottoms of their skin is like, are mostly black at this point. Mm -hmm. And this orange isn't great at covering. So it doesn't actually look all that orange. It's almost exactly sort of brownish. We're trying to give it just some sort of warmth to come through the green. I don't want just pure yeah. green orcs. Also, you know, total uh, transparency. My orcs, they're not traditional Games Workshop orcs, right? They're not that that green or the goblin green. Yeah. Um, I like this more almost avocado, deserty sort of skin tone. Yeah. And that's just kind of a thing that I've always been a fan fan of. Um, so yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna come back to this first guy and make sure. Looks pretty good. I don't know that I would have thought to undercoat orange as part of a green, an otherwise green model. Right, right. To give it a little bit of warmth. That's a that's a cool idea. Thank you. Yeah, it kind of just gives it a bit of yeah, a bit of that warmth and a bit of diversity. It's kind of like we, you know, when we did the the mega stream with the mega gargants, yeah. we undercoated some of them in a very like dark red or even purple was one of them. And it's a way that you can add a lot of a lot of diversity to these these like skin tones essentially. You can have more purple, more right. reds in different parts of the model and really influence whatever that final kind of skin color is that you're gonna be doing. So that's right, Quark cool. is not brown and orcs are not green. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same idea, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so because I have big shoulder pads, I can do these. You're, yes. You're thinking I can do some orange on the shoulder Absolutely. pad? Absolutely. So you can see I have one of my shoulder pads. It's pretty orange. Yeah. And um, yeah, I can get this on screen. This is one of my favorite things about, about this orange is 
Uh, it's very translucent, and so the, the layers build up in an interesting way where you can really, really change the, the look of the color. So you can see I'm, I applied it pretty heavily here, and it's becoming very, very rich. If you go too far, it'll actually begin to become a little bit red as it builds up, so you have to be careful. But it's also one of the cool things about this paint. It's just so, so flexible. I like it. Yeah. How's everyone doing in chat tonight? Looks like you're having a good time. Yeah, let us know. Um, so this is our this is our first night. Uh, last week we advertised a... Um, um, I'll go and plug this. Uh, we, we advertised that we're going to be doing a... Um, sort of a, a, a review of community projects. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. before the stream tonight, Zach and I went through the... Um, various hobby-related yeah. channels in the Discord and pulled out some uh, some highlights to share with all of you. And so we'll be sh sharing that in a little bit. Um, but, you know, going forward, uh, if that's something you want to contribute to and be part of, feel free to throw pictures of your projects, your progress. Mm. It doesn't have to be finished product. No, it can not. just be sort of works in progress yeah. into uh, one of the relevant hobby channels in the Discord. And... Uh, you know, we just kind of pick a couple at random, and it's a fun thing. It's not a competition. We're just, like, picking out some things that catch our eye. Exactly. And, uh, and, and share it with us. Yeah, and let us know in chat, too, tonight, if you're, if you're hobbying along. It's a, it's a great way to crank out a couple models on a Wednesday night. Absolutely. Definitely let us know what you guys are working on. Uh, I, I always like to hobby during the hobby stream, whether you're building or painting, uh, no matter what I'm doing. So definitely let us know what you guys are working on. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so Brett has a bit more of those shoulder pads. I actually had missed one of mine. Um, so we might end up doing it a different color. I have one orange, one black, and then one that's... Do you want one orange? You want no, because I don't, orange? I haven't, it's not undercoated with white. I see. That's, that's the step I had missed. Right, and if you don't undercoat it with white, it's going to look brown. It's so pointless. <laughs> like, maybe it'll be a blue shoulder pad or black yeah. one. You know, yeah, who knows? We'll see. So, yeah. All right, does that, that look good? Thick. Does that I feel like good? It. Yeah, yeah, All that's right. plenty, I think. Very okay. nice. And one of the things I picked up from uh, watching you earlier today oh, yeah. is... You know, overspray is totally fine at this step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, don't stress yes. about it. Absolutely. You're just trying to get 80% coverage here. You know, like, you're just trying to cover the things that need covering, and then we'll mm -hmm. touch up the, the overspray later. 100%. That's yeah. why we're starting with the skin. It's the biggest surface, and it's just going to be yep. messy. It's going to be everywhere. And uh, no, no, there's no point in being more tidy than you need to be. It's yep. just wasted effort. Exactly. Right? That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. It's just kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't contribute. All right, what's our next step? All right, so the next step is we're going to now go ahead and apply uh, the green paint. Get rid and of this orange. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Did I clean mine out? I did not. Oh, that would have been cool. Um, anyway, so the next color is going to be the green, and this is uh, a model air paint. This is called uh, Ochre, and before, before recently, I believe it was also actually called Tank Ochre. And uh, at some point recently, I feel like they changed it. Um, but the way you can know it's the same color is it's uh, Model Air. They all have their identification code. Yeah, they've so got a is, number. Yeah, this is 71.081. So you might find it uh, under a different name, depending on how long it's been at, at your local game store. But uh, that's the number that you need to know. And uh, it's this total, like, like old avocado, yeah. buttery kind of disgusting green, and I love it. It's an army tank green. Yeah. It's an army tank green, exactly. Uh, it's like a uh, almost like a green draft. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this up. I'm gonna apply some of it here, and now this paint, as I mentioned, is much more um, opaque than the orange. So okay. we'll have to be a bit more careful. Um, the worst case is we cover up more orange than we wanted, and it's not the end of the world. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. So this now we're gonna go back to painting everything from the very top. I made a drip. Ah, oh, that's a drip. Last, you, uh, I think you had to lick it off. Yeah, last week I was really bad about this. <laughs> Hopefully this isn't Making a sign a of things to come. Mm. All right. Cool, cool. I'm ready. Yes. No, Watchmaster, it's 71.081. He said 7, yeah. 7. <laughs> He's like 7.081. I can't wait to forget that. <laughs> so here we go. I've got the green. And uh, again, I'm just going to make sure that it's coming out of the barrel all right. Looks good. And uh, so let's do this. We're going to again go to the, the zenithal highlighting, as okay. they like to call so it. So going from the top. From the top. And, and we're focusing on the skin, right? Focusing on the skin, yeah. We really just want this on the skin. And just get it in there. Is this a little clogged? No, okay, cool. And just applying it from the top. If we still see kind of 
any any white showing, then we'll want to kind of come down on the model and apply it a bit uh, a bit more head on. Yeah, that's completely fine. This is the place where you can do a bit more cleanup because after this. The film is just going to be washed, and that's essentially it. So you want to make sure that you have the coverage that you need. And so, it's, again, still overspray is okay at this point. Totally right? okay. It's all right if I'm getting some green on weapon handles and absolutely um, and snake bite or um, uh, squid cloaks. <laughs> it's encouraged. The messier this process, the better. But yeah, the important thing is that this is the last step for the skin, and so whatever the skin looks like after this, that's basically what it's going to look like. Exactly. Yep. The, uh, the brown wash that we'll apply once this is cured is going to really help finalize and blend these colors in. It's going to tone it down a little bit um, and just kind of cap it off. Cool. Uh, let's get a close up on this one here. Yeah. So you guys can kind of see there's still the orange in there. It's much less apparent, which is totally, totally fine. Um, and we're just kind of getting that coverage all around. I totally regret picking the guy with the one foot on the ground because he does not hold anywhere. <laughs> This guy, I love this guy. So let's go ahead and do this again from the very top. And there's the green. It might take a little while to appear, so just don't resist the urge. If you're doing this at home, resist the urge to just totally crank out the paint. It's all about those those thin layers, little bit by little bit. And that's really the secret to, to any airbrushing, really. Um, so here we go. Yeah, I love how this is turning out. Cool. Nice. Oh, there it is. I knew I was going to do that at one point. Got my head in the frame. Okay, almost there. I feel like. Yeah, it looks looking good. How's yours going? It's oh, good, yeah. Awesome. I'm, uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this. Um, there's a couple of folks in chat asking about tools. Um, you brought mm. your own airbrush here tonight. Zach and I have spent a lot of time talking about the airbrushes that we use. You totally. have a, a different model. Do you want to tell us about yeah. what you're using tonight? Absolutely. So I have uh, my only airbrush, actually. This is the Awada Eclipse. It's, it's a great uh, starter airbrush. It's a, it's a dual action airbrush, which means oh. uh, when I press down, uh, it's going to go ahead and apply more or less air. Uh, if it wasn't so stuck, and if as I pull back, it's going to apply more, more or less paint. And it's a really great starting starting brush. Um, I got mine on Amazon. I think it even came with air compressor. It was like 140, so it's definitely not the cheapest brush you can get. But it's also definitely not the most expensive. So yeah. um, I, I just like it. It works for me. I don't have anything particularly amazing to say or not say about it, other than it just works for me. And I think that's the yeah. number one thing to to do with your hobby, right? And uh, if you're familiar with it and it works for you. And that's good, you know. The um, that model is sort of considered comparable, often often in the same category mm. with the Badger Patriot yep. that Zach uses and that I'm using right now. Um, a good good beginner airbrush. Mm -hmm. um, one of the Very things that I charge. noticed uh, as you're working with it is the sort of cup is very like large. Yes, the opening exactly. is very large and wide, and it's easy to get um, cleaning tools down in there. So if you get clogs. To clean out. It's pretty. It's pretty essential. Um, because it's gonna happen, just like it's happening now. I think. I was just feeling like I was not getting all the paint through, so I'm just kind of taking this off. Here, I'll, I'm gonna zoom in on while you're. This is one of the things. Oh, sure. I'm yeah. Show your is, cleaning process. We've been. Yeah. So what I've done is I've gone ahead. I just unscrewed the top. Uh, first thing is I'm gonna go ahead and actually just kind of stab this this uh, the nozzle here into the into the needle. I can kind of feel it. Uh, I can feel when there's a bit of paint clogging it up, and I don't think there is now. Either I got it off, or or um, that's not the problem. And I'm also going to feel it this way. I'm not feeling any resistance really, so I think we might have gotten it. This nozzle, uh, this this outer nozzle looks fine too. So I went ahead. I did run some uh, water and paint through it. So once more, just to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and run this in here. You can see all the paints from uh, today. Cool. So that should do it. And then I'm just going to really quick reconstruct it. Uh, you guys will notice I actually don't have the back of my airbrush on. This, this, yeah. this is actually enclosed normally. What's going on with that? Because it doesn't do anything for me. Uh, I, I find myself wanting to be able to clean it easily at a moment's notice. Yeah. And I think one of the things that bogs people down with airbrushing is like having to constantly clean yeah. and all these things. So, You're taking it apart and putting it back together yeah, and taking I'm it like, apart and putting it back together. I'll just take, just take this back off. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Affect it in any way. I don't really know what it does other than protect the back of the needle, I guess. Yeah. So in theory, I could, I could be rubbing against the, uh, the, the, the bolt here 
and uh, or the the nut and oh, actually yeah, loosening it, loosening it. Yep. But if it you're happens careful. like once in a blue moon. Honestly. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I like that. It's sort of like a a little bit higher risk, but you save time. Yeah, you know, in your cleaning process and. Uh, as long as you know your tools and you know your setup, you don't have cats mm. walking across your hobby desk. Oh <laughs> yeah, right. It's fine. <laughs> I have cat, uh, a cat walking across oh, my yeah. hobby desk for sure. How does that go? Um, pretty badly. Does she ever <laughs> knock your airbrush off its stand? The airbrush, no. Um, but I will. Have, I do have to make sure I don't have any of these nasty paint pots around, yeah. especially because it's right next to my computer. So uh. that's a, that's like a nightmare waiting to happen right there. All right, so I'm just gonna finish up on the skin. Looks like you're good to go. Yeah, I think I, I was a little bit heavy-handed with the skin color, mm -hmm. and so some of the orange doesn't, you know, come through as as strongly as maybe I would have liked. But sure. um, that's okay. It's no worries. I'm learning my lessons. Exactly. Now we won't do it today, but if you guys ever try this at home and you feel like you're not getting enough orange, you can go back and apply a bit more. Um, it, it will have a, a small effect, and so that's always a kind of a cleanup you can do. It's not. It's never totally, totally too late. Also, I think like some of this stuff is meant to be really subtle, so it's okay if like the orange yes. is very nuanced. It's okay to be nuanced, delicate. And it's okay to not be consistent. Like one orc is not going to look the same as another right. orc. That's like, right. Just like humans, you know. Yeah. And uh, and that's totally cool. All right. Yeah. Hopefully that airbrush uh, debugging is helpful, guys. It's it's not pretty. Like yeah. We make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. So it's it's definitely part of it. All right. Yeah. So, so we got skin done. That's the skin. We're gonna leave it. We're not gonna wash it just yet because we want to give some time for the paint to cure. Mm -hmm. It's not just drying. Even when it's dry, uh, it doesn't mean it, it's, it's cured and actually is ready to actually take something on, on top of it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and hit up a bunch of the areas in black. Okay. And I do my boys' pants and boots all in black. Yeah. Because uh, my color scheme is kind of a combination of my three favorite clans. This is of course uh, goths, uh, deaf skulls, and uh, uh, free buddhas. And uh, so a lot of the black kind of goth stuff comes yeah. comes into play there. Yeah, you know, I, I thought it was interesting also that normally I think the inclination, if you black prime black, is to just le you know spend right. a lot of time and effort avoiding those areas yeah, because yeah. you're like, oh, they're already the color I exactly. want them to be eventually, and so you spend all this extra time with your base coating, you know, like in this process we're just doing with the skin, mm. avoiding those black. You know, maybe you're masking it off, or maybe you're like hand painting it with a brush. Right. And like, no, you can paint the black areas a second time yeah, black, go back over especially them. if it means that you save all this time up front on the base coating yeah, steps. Exactly. So that was something that like I was I learned as I was watching you th go through this process. Yeah, yeah. I think don't be afraid to to just go back over that. Often yeah. it's it's just it's just easier and yeah. faster than. Um, yes, it was door guys. It's okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna grab some black. Uh, in this case, I have um, another model air. This is. Just pure black, um, and I'm not really particular about it. So, whatever whatever kind of black works for you, just keep it generally okay. consistent. So, a few drops of that, and uh, we're just going to go ahead. We're going to apply this to the pants. We're also going to apply this to the hides, uh, which want to have a, a black, right. as well as. And we're going to hit the hides with another color later. This is just a. Yeah, these are just things you want to be working with straight from black. So, right. the the weapons, uh, the hide, and the pants. Okay. Basically everything except for the skin and your orange armor. And I really want to make sure to not hit the skin and orange armor, right? That would be At ideal, yes. <laughs> exactly. Good luck. All right. Here we go. And this is where I think one of the things I noticed, I think your Iowata, your airbrush, yeah. has a finer needle mm. than mine. I think that might be just looking at the size of the pattern. Yeah, let's sure. do a test right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to zoom in. Let's do this. And you do just like a line. Yeah. Oh, cool. a super straight line. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same kind of thing right next to it. Oh wow, yeah. I think it is That's wider. Fascinating. Uh, so I think maybe I think I think this is yours is probably a finer needle. Yeah, I think so. That's crazy how detailed and fine you can huh. get that. Yeah, I'll be honest. I have no idea what what size it is, but it is it's the one just default out of the box. And uh, this is one of the reasons I do like this brush is because I can just do everything I need with it. I don't need to switch to a different size or anything. And you want me to do weapons as well? Yes, please. Okay. So the weapons will largely be black, and we're going to add a bit of um, kind of metal parts to them. And again, this is a lot of this is designed to be fast. Um, well, it's one, it's two things. One, it's fast, and two, 
I think it's really easy to get really busy with some of these orc models very quickly. Um, and it's something that we did talk about even with the Mega Gargants is knowing when to stop adding extra colors, extra materials, things like that. And it's okay to kind of have some, some repeats and tones and it keeps it more consistent. Yeah. Um, while we're doing this, um, Matthew is asking if we do super chats during hobby time. We absolutely do. We do. Um, and a few have come in. Uh, Adrian, do you want to take a couple questions? Yeah, let's do this thing. All right. Um, Digital Designer. Thank you, Digital Designer. Thanks so much. Evening Titans. Happy Hobby Wednesday. Woo! Quick question for you. Would you be okay with being sent hobby supplies to try out, even if not on stream? I'm always looking to convert people to scale model and gunpla tools. Ooh. Uh, absolutely. Um, I think we, you know, Zach, Zach and I both have, uh, even just in the short time we've been doing this, had um, some realizations <laughs> either from people <laughs> suggesting things in chat or um, sending us uh, sending us things that we've tried out and just sort of had our eyes open to new tools or new processes. Absolutely. Um, and that's what this is all about. So, uh, obviously we're like, we can't promise anything in terms of, you know, whether we'll like it or not. <laughs> um, but we're happy to try it out and um, we're happy to give it a go at, on a project that is, you know, that it's appropriate for. Yeah. Um, that would be amazing. There's so many uh, great tools and resources out there, and, and it's always good, good to try them, right? Yeah. It's funny, like, we get we get sponsorship offers all the time as well from, like, the actual companies, and often it's like, if you send us the stuff, we will try it, and we and we will, you know, we'll, t we'll tell our, our, our viewers, you guys, whether we like it or not. Like, we won't promise to say we like it, but we'll, uh, we'll definitely talk about it one way or another. Um, and it just feels so much more valuable than anything else that that you yeah. offer us. You know, Adrian, another thing that I'll say, well, I'm going back to painting this model. Sure, sure. This is a step that I historically would do with a paintbrush. Like, mm, yeah. before we started talking about this process today, right. I would go, I would absolutely, like, I'd paint the skin, I'd paint the armor plates, and when I'm sitting here to paint this gun, I would just pull out yeah, my wet palette and a brush, <laughs> and I'll paint the gun black. Right. And I just did this in like a third the time that it would have taken. And like, Agreed, yeah, right? it's not absolutely perfect. No, no. But I could if I wanted to, like the line between mm. the gun and the hand. Yeah. There's a little bit of blurring there. But yeah. if I if I wanted to, I could pull out the brush and yeah, clean up that bit, line. Yeah. And it still would take less time than... So, <laughs> man, this is amazing. I'm sort of having my mind blown going yeah, through this. that's awesome. You. That's the goal, right? Yeah. Thanks so much. Exactly, and yeah, you can totally you can totally do cleanup with it as well, and the odds are once again that the time you spend doing that cleanup is going to be much less the time than the time it took to to clean up by hand before. So I will say the one thing you have to watch out for is overspray. That like oh, you yeah. have to orient the model in a direction where you you know the overspray from the airbrush isn't mm -hmm. like going to hit yeah, you really the do. pants behind it or something <laughs> that you care about. One hundred percent. So yeah, it's just constantly rotating the model. This is another uh, airbrush tip is you generally want to be moving your model rather than your airbrush where possible. Yeah, I'm super bad at that. It's tough. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, because, you know, there's many different types of feeds for paints, but for a number of reasons, um, you just kind of want to keep your, your airbrush as, as level as possible, not moving, uh, and just rotate the model around it. Yeah, and if you want evidence of why that's important, just go back and watch last week's hobby stream. I spilled <laughs> a completely full pot of paint oh, that's all right. over the place because ah. I was like moving the airbrush back and forth. The paint sloshed out and got all over, got <laughs> oh everywhere. Gosh. Um, that's the reason not to do it. Don't You're a do hot that. mess, Brett. I'm a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I like to think is that I'm making the mistakes live on camera so that all of you guys can learn from exactly. my mistakes. You don't yeah. have to do the same stupid stuff. That's why I clogged my, my brush, just to show them. Yep, yeah. yep. You got to show the cleaning process. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm going to do, now I know you have some orange uh, shoulder pads as well. And what I like to do on them is I like to do a fade from the orange to the black. It is very stylized for sure. But it's just something that I like to do. So I've gone ahead and added a bit, a bit of one right here, and uh, I've, I've, I've cheated a little bit because I actually have it coming from the um, the squig hide right here, um, which is already black. Now, 
Keep in mind, this squig hide is eventually going to be a different color. So it's not going to just look like the squig hide is bleeding over into this other yeah. shoulder pad. And so it once again lets me kind of do this little cheat, keep it easy, and, uh, and then I'll come back and cover it later on. But I do like this orange to black fade that makes no narrative sense. I just like the way it looks. Okay, It's very so much like a, like a World of Warcraft kind of effect, right? I was, yeah, I was trying to keep the line between the black squig mm -hmm. hide and the orange mm -hmm. uh, crisp. But maybe I'll just add a little bit extra black to try to try to yeah. fade a little bit. Yeah, you know bit? what we could also do actually, while you're there, is yeah, let's grab mm -hmm. a front camera. Um, may I for a second? Yeah, sure. If we actually let's go back down to this camera so yeah. you guys can see, because we can. You have been so diligent here, and I oh, and I really like that. I might, I'm I'm going to try just taking a little glob of the uh, the silly putty stuff, and I'm just going to shove it in here. And again, just kind of by hand, real quick, like so. So now we have a, a, the absolute minimal mask that we need. Right. So you can do a nice little fade right here. Because that's and this is for the black? This is for the black. So, so I'm gonna do, it, let me do fade up black from the bottom. Exactly. So Got you're going to kind of do the opposite of my, my shoulder pad. Um, and I'm into it. All right, let's see Sorry, if I, I can... I keep putting my head there. I'm just getting into my orcs, boys. Let's see if I can make this work. All right, so I'm fading up from the bottom. You got it. I want to make sure I don't have a clogged brush when I do this. <laughs> Classic. Okay. Yeah, it's looking really nice. I like it. I need to oil my uh, my trigger mechanism. I can, like hear it clicking. All right. All right. Oh, well, it looks awesome. I love it. Beautiful. A little hard to see. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's the black. Next time, you can just go ahead and peel that off now if you want. Yep. Um, I've got one more to do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can move well, on. Well, I did three. No, you can kidding. move on. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah why don't you move on? I'll, I can move on. I'll talk about the next step. Or we can take another super chat while I crank this Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Let's take, take a question. All right. Uh, this one is from Spartan X47. Mm. Thank you, Spartan. I bought three of the Beast Naga boxes. And I've Lucky. been putting together the boys for hours now. I regret my decisions. <laughs> that was me earlier, remember? I was like, oh, I'm so oh, tired oh. of building. Um, That's a lot of bee snaggers. They're, they're, the funny thing is, like, they're actually pretty easy to put together because um, they're only like a few parts each. But there's just so many of them. So three boxes, that'd be 60 of those bee snagga boys. And it definitely adds up. Um, I built 20 of my, my current 40. Uh, so, good luck. And that box, what does that box include? So the box includes 20 Beast Snaga boys, so the infantry. Yep. It includes, includes a Zod Grod Wart Snaga, who is the main snake by uh, Runt Herd. He's yep. the kind of guy with the squig hair. It includes a uh, Knob and Smasher Squig, which is the, the character knob, uh, which we played last night and it was yep. awesome. Three of the Squig Hog boys, which are the you know, squig riders. And, and a Bomb Squig. Nice. So that's that, and of course it has the limited edition codex and the data cards yeah. for all the stuff. So uh, it's got a lot of stuff in there. It's actually like, despite how uh, <laughs> limited it was, it's actually a good deal for what you get in there. Right. So, all right. All right. I've got my. I've just got guns and weapons to do here. Guns and weapons. Um, oh, yeah. So also, one other thing we can do while I yeah no crank this good. out you're is. Go through uh, the collection of hobby submissions that let's you guys it. have uh, submitted to the mm, Discord. So absolutely. let's take a look at that. Yeah, let's see what you guys got. Um, that's the wrong video. <laughs> that's the wrong video too. Oh my gosh, Work I'm time. failing it. Uh, <laughs> well, this is all very uh, true. So you guys' stuff. Isaac, I can, I hey. can, I can do that. <laughs> No, I can't. Nope, next one. No, I can't. No. Oh. Ah. All right. Uh, here you go. <laughs> Technical support. Um, so yeah, this is stuff that you guys have been posting in the Discord. Definitely, we want to show more of the stuff. So if it's stuff you want to see, let us know. And uh, just be posting in there. We always see them. We always look at them. Yep. But this is a cool way to actually kind of show them back to the community, talk about them, all that yeah. good stuff. And we so. got this idea when we did the, the mega stream. Yeah, that's right. The other week. Uh, we, you know, everyone was hobbying along, and it was, mm. it was super cool to see. Uh, and we shared out some of the the progress pics that you guys shared in the Discord, and we're like, this is a great idea. We should just do this 
more often. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. It was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you guys are all awesome painters as well. Right. And so it's cool to see the, the work that you guys are, are doing. Um, okay, so while Zach's working on that, uh, I, there's nothing to work on. I just have to click this. Oh, Zach's just going to click Yeah, it. guys, I am we'll here, um, and I am on, uh, I'm in the studio. I'm off to the side doing my own painting. Uh, let's take a look at these, some of the, some of the fan stuff mm. we've got here. So, um, <laughs> we went through the Discord, found a few cool things. Ooh. Like Brett was saying, not everything's finished. Adrian, what do you think? Or conversion? I love it, I love it. Well, that was the, uh, mega the scrap jet, which looks amazing. This drop pod is just absolutely mind blowing. Amazing. Yeah, that's Such great. Good. I love what they did with the base uh, there. Loving this terrain, terrain set. Yeah. Like this super, uh, this centerpiece building with yeah. the dome. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's a, that's a print from a company. Oh, look at that gas. Very nice. That's amazing. Also, a gorgeous base, which really helps. A lot. Really nice. You know? This is an amazing model. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm like, I'm digging this conversion. That's I didn't so even know sick. what this kit. The, the face was from. Yeah, the head, the head is from the Inceptor and the body's from an Ambot. Really, really cool. It's probably, I think it's like a um, Centurion. Mm. <laughs> loving this sister, loving this shield. Oh, that's amazing. Nice and copper. Yeah, no the, copper, yet. the copper looks amazing. I actually, I like that copper better than the heavy metal team. Oh, look at this skink. Um, it's a chameleon skink. Yeah. From the underworld. You don't I see these guys very often. You no, know, you don't. So cool. And these annihilators are, are beautiful. Oh, they look so ancient. This dark, yeah. I'm a, they I'm look a like fan. stone. Yeah, they remind me, they feel very yeah. like Tomb raider -y, Yeah. Know? Um, which is awesome. Like they're golems almost. Yeah. So, um, here's what I would say. Uh, one of the things that we noticed when we were putting these up, uh, we'll let them run through another time, is that there's not great ways for us to attribute them to the people who, who made them. We can have like a line of, a block of text saying thanks and list everybody's Discord names. If you put something up like super cool and finished or just like a, a picture that you're really into, something you, you're thinking, hey, it'd be awesome if the guys featured this. Um, one thing you could do is take just any photo editing software and just like in text, put your name, oh, something yeah. like that on the photo. Totally. Um, whatever you want to be attributed as. Um, you don't have to. We're still going to pick photos that don't have that if we like them. But that that's just helpful if you want, um, if you want us to... Well, if you want people to see your name, um, because we, like Brett said, we're going to be doing this a lot. Um, right. we, we're we're thinking we're going to name this segment. Um, <laughs> we're pretty sure John would like these, but we didn't actually ask him. <laughs> and so that's yeah, the name. you can tell that John would like them because you see him we've stolen there. his likeness and stuck it in the bottom left corner. It's thumbs up, two thumbs up, two thumbs, two thumbs, thumbs up, up from John on all of these. We yep. think we're guessing. We have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd probably like all of them. He probably would. Well, great work, everyone. Really, yeah. really. And thank inspiring. you, John, for your un, un <laughs> your, uh, for your yeah. your uh, your yeah your approval. Awesome. All right, I'm good. I've got black. black. Dope. So we've got the black finished. We have now a couple different types of materials, uh, colored materials that are going to go on top of the black. Yeah. Do we want to pause here and just well, why don't you just show the state of the models? Yes. In the so let's take a zoom look. cam here. Let's get some zoom cam. So right now you can see we have the skin. Uh, we have the orange armor where applicable. Not too much on these models, and everything else is just black. And it's and we're kind of resetting them. Uh, well. Not, resetting is not the word, right? Because we're not using the same black as the primer. We're specifically using the color black that we're using for the rest of the army. Um, and if you want to pass me those over, we can yeah. we can take a look at yours as well, Brett. So this is looking amazing. You can see here, we did the fade from the bottom of this shoulder rather than from, from this side. Looking really, really sharp. I love it. And uh, yeah, I like the skin. I feel like you did you you feel like you did too much, but I think it's a nice... Did you want me to do black on the pants? Yes, please. Oh, okay. Oops. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Well, that's fine. Uh, well, hey, we knew that I was going to go fast, so... You know, All right, gotta go fast. it is. Got to go fast, yeah. <laughs> no worries. I'll start uh, I need a red. I need a red airbrush. A red airbrush? Yeah, so they, they go do, faster. They do go faster. This yeah. is very true. Um, so the next thing we're going to do in just a moment is uh, the gray on the pants. So uh, if you guys haven't heard me give this feel before, um, you're in for a treat. The, the secret to doing nice black on models is actually using blues and grays. So the pants are going to be black, we're going to hit them up with the gray highlight, and we're going to wash the whole thing in a blue, a Dracon off nightshade. So, um, yeah. That's a cool tip. Um, the idea of like basically using a gray and mm -hmm. then washing it as a way of giving your gray like a hue or a tint. Right, we talked right. about that 
uh, when Zach and I have done terrain, that yeah. you like you tint with a with a wash after the afterwards. And this is essentially doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I totally I love agree. It. Like pure black doesn't look good. You need some color. You need some shading in there. So you don't want to do pure, pure black. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the gray. I'm using a cold gray from Game Hair. Again, not particularly about the kind of gray that I use. I just just as long as you have it, you know. I was using Stonewall gray for a while, and then I just was able to get like five bottles of this gray. So that's what I'm using. Ultimately, it's gonna get covered up and uh, keep it nice and easy. Uh, so he's gonna get okay. the pants. I'm gonna zoom in on you there. Oh yeah, let's do it. So we're gonna hit them up in a sort of highlight fashion. So the most important, oh I got some green there, which we can cover up with the uh, black. Uh, the most impart, important part about doing these pants is you gotta make sure you get the booty, okay? Uh, so we're gonna get I love it. one cheek right there. Watch your head, Adrian. One cheek right there. And don't let it spread out too much. It should be pretty, pretty sharp like that. We'll get kind of the heel there. I love this. The highlighted, the highlighted butt cheeks. You got to get the orc booty. Otherwise, you know why? But this is why you play orcs, honestly. Um, so we're getting that. We'll get the top of this thigh. And to be honest, on this model, I'm also trying to cover up a bit of that gray. So top of the thighs here. And we're just—it's going to give it a bit of volume. That's all it is. A bit sharper. There we go. I think, if anything, apply more than you think you need. So you can see that's like pretty bright right there, pretty yeah. sharp. But that's gonna really pop when we go ahead and wash it in uh, the blue. Yeah, it'll, the blue will tone it down a little bit, but it, it's not gonna look like just two giant white spots on, no. the, on their butt. Exactly. Um, and then also while I'm here, the weapons are also gonna be a sort of black metal. So I just apply kind of alternating sections, like so, just almost in the little corners. I'm a painter that prescribes to the rule of cool. Um, I will follow lighting principles generally, but then the moment that it's just cooler to do something that makes no sense, I will just completely do that. So Absolutely agree. do that. Yeah. Totally. That's the way to do it. That's why you and Zach are friends. Yeah, I know. I literally <laughs> wouldn't talk to him if this wasn't the case. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to this guy. And yeah, lots of this gun will probably get touched up with silver, um, but it takes me like two seconds to add some extra detail there. So why not? Again, getting the base, getting the top there, and getting the top of those thighs, the boots. And if you want, if you want, Brett, I can also do your your gray because it's pretty minimal. Yeah, and honestly, I think this is where your finer airbrush actually yes <laughs> uh, it makes a big difference. Like I was struggling a little bit trying to get the black without going over into the skin, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like getting these real fine little spots. It's, it's, it's a bridge gray too far. On the like that, that's where the the real fine tip makes it. Yeah, that's actually, totally fair. actually matters. Absolutely. So get just a little bit of this black shoulder pad. There's some booty right there. Got the heels. And we're just kind of going around, adding these little little splotches of color. Oops. And a bit more on that weapon. Get that side. There we go. I'll give you one of mine. Yeah, totally. I want to try one of them. Please do, Maybe please do. Guy. All right. So this guy, you can get the, if you can get the knee, the knee is great. Knee and like kind of upper thigh are kind of a similar space on the orcs. <laughs> so, um, the gray. Uh, yes, that is it, the cold gray. Like so. And this is actually the same weapon. These kits are theoretically monopose. There's a couple things you can swap around, like most of the heads you can move around, and um, only a couple of the arms you can swap, like the guys that just have a hand holding the same type of weapon. Right. Um, yeah, it's interesting how they're. I mean, the new the new kits are amazing in terms of pose, like uh, in terms of dynamism. Right. But maybe they're going the other direction a little bit in terms of posability. They've got three or four mm -hmm. like sort of canned poses that totally they want agree. you to use. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, your, your beast snaggas are going to look a little bit like your buddy's <laughs> beast snaggas. Yeah, exactly. That's the price you pay for having amazing looking beast snaggas. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So keep an eye on the small ways you can, you can customize them. And uh, also one thing I'll do sometimes is, again, if, if you, so the, the box comes with two identical sprues, and sometimes I'll actually kind of line up the guys that are, that are the same exact pose together and have them together so I can make sure that I paint them distinctly Paint them differently. differently. That's a great you know? idea. Um, because if you don't, odds are actually it's so funny, I've done this many times before where I think that I painted them, them, them differently, but whatever my gut reaction is when, when I pick up yeah. a model, 
you you end up painting it the same way because that's yeah. how you are. You got reaction. It's yeah. really funny. All right, so I've got thighs, I've got booties, oh, okay. um, like toes, feet, tops of feet. Uh, so the heel is more important. Heels tops more of important. feet is fine, okay. but the tops of the feet, the front, these are actually. Sorry, I'm getting so super excited about works, but the boots are actually steel-toed boots, and so those are going to get painted over with metal eventually. Okay. But if again worried about time, as ever, anyone who's painting works is, uh, just hit that highlight on the front of the shoe, and you don't have to do the metal as metal. Honestly, it's more, it's it's rubber or it's just uh, metal that's painted black. Yep. So I like it. Yeah. All right. Anything on the guns or or weapons? Yes, please. So the guns, I would do. So if this is the gun, you're going to kind of do like. Boom, 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 or just boom, boom. Yep. Just kind of alternating sides a little bit. Okay. Uh, up to your choice. While you're doing that, uh, I'll just take a moment to say, today's a very special day for me, Brett. You know that? I. What is today for mm. you? Mm. Today, Zach remembers. Yeah. Today is my anniversary. Yay! Woo! <laughs> uh, Happy anniversary. And the man. anniversary of uh, Las Vegas Open, uh, which I was married during. <laughs> <laughs> you were married? Oh, yeah, wow. and, that, and that's uh, how good of uh, friend, friends and family I have is they all came here. They, they, got, they came to get married, uh, watch me get married rather than go to the LVO. So, uh, Mel, if you're watching, happy anniversary. <laughs> Mel is definitely watching. Mel is definitely watching. Oh, she is watching. Mel's in chat, yep. Yeah. Your blushing bride uh, is uh, spectating your painting session. <laughs> it looks like she's talking smack about me. Yeah. He does protest too much about metallic paint. <laughs> happy anniversary, Mel. <laughs> uh, anyway, so. Uh, I'll give you a second to finish up your, right. your Yeah, booty. what about the axes? Axe, just a little bit, probably yeah. kind of the, the same principle. Yep. Um, rule of cool. Rule of cool. And then we're going to be going on to the final, yep, final, just making sure, uh, a bit of airbrushing, the final airbrush material before we do washes and go on to other stuff. All right, oh, cool. Yep. I am, I'm all set. Oh, that's right. BAO. I don't know why I said LVO. Well, there you go. One of those open things. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. The last time I said anniversary on stream, I said the wrong date. So there's proof that I get Warhammer stuff wrong, too. <laughs> can, can I sleep on the couch here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to do the hides. And yeah. I want to talk briefly about the hides. I was originally going to do all my hides as squig hides because, you know, of course. And also because it's my squigs are Vallejo Blue Green. But then I realized on the Squig Hog boys, they actually have saddles using hide. And I obviously wasn't going to have uh, the same colored hides on the squigs. Yeah. One, because that's weird color wise, but two, it's also a little disturbing for the squigs. Be like, here's the, the flesh of your family <laughs> that we're going to ride you with. They're going you know? to use it as a blanket it's to keep a little you warm. Weird. What about using if the <laughs> saddles were the same color as the orcs? As the orcs. That, uh, well, orc I'm, skin I'm kind of doing that. So, mm. so half, I'm going to use this. To kind of differentiate my squads. Yeah. So this squad we're going to do today is going to be using the the, the squig hides, and then my other squad is going to be doing uh, kind of a, a salamanders theme color. It's the same green that's used for uh, Brian's uh, lizardmen and also for salamanders. Yeah. And so it's more of a almost it is more of a traditional green or green. Uh, so today we're going to do the uh, squig hide because I know you guys are all dying to know how to paint some Vallejo blue green. Some Vallejo blue. That's yes. what everyone. That's what everyone came here for. That's what <laughs> I came here for at least. I mean, yeah, that's exactly true. So the secret to this I found is actually we're starting with the black base, and Let's we're gonna apply put a that, layer. Put that in. Uh, oh, this isn't what you think it I is. I think we should. Uh, oh, this is Vallejo Emerald, oh. who is the the closest cousin to Vallejo Blue Green, and I actually have been using this as my base coat. Okay. So look at this. This is a very schmexy color still, very blue green, but more on the. So here, let me show the other one. Vallejo Blue Green. This is on the blue side, this is on the green side. Yeah. And to th together they make uh, the perfect combination. Yep. So, anyways, we're going to get some emerald. Now, this is our first non-air paint of the day. And Why is that? Because uh, they actually don't make this color in air paint. And the truth, truth be told, the air paints are a great way to get started in yep. airbrushing. But if you want to have the full kind of realm of painting available to you, you're going to have to learn how to thin some paints. Yeah. So I actually knew that um, because my crew are painted emerald. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, I don't use blue-green, but um, they are they are Vallejo emerald. And uh, I got into painting large volumes of crew around the time that I got an airbrush. <laughs> and I didn't oh, do anything so with the airbrush yeah. other than just base coat them. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it was you like, start. I was like, cool, now that I've decided on my color scheme for these yeah. guys, I like did you know six different test models and I was like cool I got the recipe down. Exactly. Let me go and buy the air version of these paints. Click click click. Doesn't exist. 
disappointment. No. And so then I was like, all right, I guess I need to do another like hour of watching YouTube videos to figure out how to thin paints. It's it's rough. I don't recommend starting with it. Yeah. Um, but once you once you feel confident with regular paints, you can go ahead and thin them. So <clears throat> the way I thin these paints yeah. is um, a bit unusual. Um, and so I'll do it your way. We can. Well, I don't want to clog your airbrush, but I, I haven't had any problems really. So I put just two drops into here of water. Of, of no, just paint first. Paint. Okay. And I, I know I'm a heathen. I mix in in uh, I, I, in here. I, I do that too, but I usually put whatever I'm going to thin it with in first. Um, but you could totally do that. Okay. If you want to do that, th that this is what I'm going to recommend. I'm just going to take a brush, nice thick brush. I'm going to just dunk it in this cup of water, yeah. and that's my, that's how much water I'm going to use. That's it. Oh wow. So personally, I'm okay. actually going to just mix this. Um, so feel free to do that or not. <laughs> I might add some more. I'm going to do just a teeny bit more because I can see the the color, the consistency that they always tell you if you watch the YouTubes is you want the and consistency easier. of milk. Yeah, um, right. I find I want like it a little thicker than milk, but if you do milk, you're not likely to, to clog your airbrush, right? That's kind of playing it safe. So you know, let's see. Are we going to clog right away? Nope. That's beautiful. So it's nice and thick and strong, and um, we'll see. So I'll you don't really use thinner, bad if you, you don't yours. use flow improver, you just... Just that? Just water. Now, okay. I do mine in small, small batches, right? So you can see there's just yep. a couple drops. Yep. If you do large batches, and um, you don't really want to use a lot of water, because then right. it, you can kind of get... It'll look gray where it dries, it does weird things with the material. But because I'm using so little, it's actually perfectly fine. I'll put my tincture bottles back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I see you pull them out, I was like, oh, <laughs> we're not so going to I so excited for my, my <laughs> essential oils. Alas, <laughs> I, got right. so, I got a lot of flack for that last week. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> the very first hobby stream reason. we did when we started painting, I was like kind of nervous. This was back, you know, a year and a half ago. And I like take out my, my, my uh, Citadel paint and grab my paintbrush and I start painting. And everyone's like, oh, you didn't thin his paints. And I was like, I, I totally thin my paints. And I just totally spaced. It was like the most rookie move right off the bat. It was amazing. Anyways, <laughs> so let's go ahead. Let's get a close up here so we can yep. see what's going on. Um, we're going to go ahead and apply this emerald uh, to the squig hide. And I'm being very, very slow with it. Again, I don't want to have it all come out at once. And we're just kind of building it up. I do personally enjoy a good fade, so I don't mind leaving some black here. That'll give us a bit more diversity in here. There we go. We're just, and every once in a while, I'll just do it here just to make sure, because I'm being so light with it that sometimes I'm not even sure if it's coming out. And again, just the tighter your brush, the smaller the airbrush, the easier this will be. Um, but don't be paranoid about going to the edges on this thing. This is somewhere where we actually can do some um, brush work later on to fix it up. So in fact, okay. you can see I'm leaving kind of that, that fade, so it's going from black to the Yeah, emerald. I like the idea of having a, a little bit of darker out around the mm -hmm. edges. Exactly. kind of cool. And uh, I'm going to go hit up this guy. This guy has like a whole like stegosaur on his back. Pretty gruesome, to be honest. There we go. I'm gonna make sure I cover the middle pretty pretty heavily so that the fade comes from the center and kind of goes out to the edges. All about those fades. And I found with these orcs, the ears are definitely in danger of getting some of that overflow. Uh, and again, that's just a, a small place you can do some brush cleanup, which even I would probably do that brush cleanup. Okay. Right. Looking sharp. Fresh to death with dinosaur skin. Mmm. <sighs> How's chat doing? Uh, chat's doing really good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh oh. Lots of comments. Oh, it's Zach. coming. It's coming. <laughs> Zach. Mel just asked Meg if she's a horse person. It's <laughs> happening. Oh, no. <laughs> we were actually just talking about this earlier. <laughs> it's really funny. We were talking about how to not let. The two of them learn that about each other. Yes, we li this was literally the conversation. <laughs> but anyway, sorry, what are you saying, Brett? <laughs> yeah, we have a question from Matthew Atwood. Yes. Thank you, Matthew. I'm building my first creature caster resin piece. Oh, nice. Every connection point needs about 360 degrees of filling for oh, gaps. Really? Should I fill putty when I glue? Uh, um, man. I don't know when I glue. I think, you know, you glue it together and then you fill afterwards, so maybe it's yes. a question on the timing of the yeah. filler putty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you should definitely use filler putty. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's a, a thing. 
Yeah, I, I, um, I agree. But definitely glue it, let it settle. Yeah. As much as you can. Um, this is where uh, the uh, the Instant Cure spray, right? Oh yeah, the, the accelerant, the accelerant accelerator, is great yeah. because often when you have these gaps, it can be a bit wonky. It's not wanting to sit where you want it to. So, huh. yep. All right, so for example, this is the Bob, Bob Smith industry paint that, that's yep. everywhere, and this is the associated accelerant. All com pretty much all companies have, you know, this one, this one, just make sure you pair the brand if you can. And uh, this, will, this will have it, you, you apply the paint, you put the paint parts together and you spray it, and this will seal it almost immediately, just exposes to air, and that way you can at least get it in the right position so it's not like falling over. Let that dry completely, and then go ahead and take your putty or your green stuff or whatever yeah, and, and do the, the paint up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the the accelerator is a, a total game changer when it comes yeah. to super glue. Right. You need a third. Sometimes you need a third hand, but true. Um, it makes a big difference. Things that you'll for some materials for some reason it just takes like multiple minutes for super glue to dry. It's horrible. And the accelerator just completely solves that problem. Exactly. Yeah, um, but but. Um, I know Zach really likes liquid green stuff for gap filling. Mm -hmm. I use a lot of Milliput. Um, what's your what's your just, putty I, of choice? I use regular green stuff. Yeah. Green stuff. Yeah. Um, so whatever whatever works for you, and it's just like kind of really working in there, working in there, working in there. Lots of water and all that good stuff. So yeah, and especially on organic models, you can add some texture to it to blend if there's scales or fur or something mm -hmm. in the gap, or even just skin and muscle. Yeah. Um, it's a little more tricky on uh, smooth models with, you know, the armor panels right. or something because you're really trying to match the contours of the of the thing that you're, you're gap filling, but it's not the end of the world. With that stuff I recommend, like with green stuff you should already let it uh, begin to cure for quite a while before you work with it. It's almost like 40, 40 minutes. Um, and uh, with those kind of, uh, what's, there's a word for it, like hard, Two part materials. Oh, no, oh. like um, hard surfaces. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, let it cure even more, and then you can take like your modeling knife and really just like flatten, right. flatten, 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 edge, 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 flatten, 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 edge, edge, edge. You can and, sand uh, it too. You can sand it later on. So things yeah. like that. So best of luck, Matthew. Um, I haven't ever put a ca creature caster piece together. I don't even have one. Um, they're gorgeous models. So that's kind of good to know that uh, there's fault in those beautiful models. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. This is like. Uh, I, I don't know if this is real or not, but um, you know, there's like a skill, there's certain like a uh, certain pride that comes from having taken a model that was. See, some people look mm -hmm. at it this way, like, oh, I, I, I have, I love this model more because I invested blood, sweat, and tears in assembling right. it. And other people are like, why would I pay $120 for this model that I have to then spend <laughs> another $20 on putties right. and, and hours and of your tools time. Yeah. To, to fill all the terrible gaps in this thing. It's a bit of a rite of passage. You know, they, you're not, they wouldn't be wrong, I'll be honest. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a totally valid feeling. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've got, we've got, um, we've got squig hide. We have the bit, first layer of squig hide. Yeah. Now it's time for true blue. Blue green. Blue, blue, green. Blue, 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 true blue, green, blue, green. You know, I cleaned out my airbrush here, yeah. but I probably didn't need to, right? Um, so yeah, I, I ran, I ran a cursory cleaning through it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly. Okay. You don't really need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, just a bit of uh, thinning water, <laughs> and uh, we'll be good to go. So this is gonna be again, just kind of, we're, we're zooming in, right? So we have black, and then we're saying emerald green, and now we're gonna say blue green. Uh, and uh, that's kind of the way you can kind of think about it. This one, I almost may have thinned it too much. We'll see. Woo! All right, let's take a look. So, ah, this looks great. It's going to be a little Watch difficult to see at first. And uh, just have have faith in the emperor. And so we're just doing sort of the center. Yeah, the, the center bits, yeah. highlights. If you know, if you can imagine yeah. a highlight kind of space, uh, it's pretty flexible. And we're giving the color some depth, some variation. Exactly. It's funny because these these colors really, really are hard to differentiate right now. Um, but when we do the brown wash, it just comes alive. I'll tell you. I love all the I different like kinds of pelts they have. 
Like some of them are spiny, some of them are scaly, but they're all beautiful. So there you go, you guys can see some of those pelts there. Yep. And uh, once we're finished with that, that is the end of our airbrush. And also, time for a coffee break. Yeah, you have orc themed coffee tonight too. I do. <laughs> I love it. It's uh, the wall brew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's from the Wall Brewery. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was like, there's gotta be some pun here, but... Ah, <sighs> all right. All right, uh, so we're done with airbrushing. We are done with airbrushing. Now, we... Actually, that's not entirely true. We're gonna airbrush the wash? It's mostly true. We we are gonna wash things. We are gonna do a little bit of, uh, of an airbrush wash, exactly. Okay. So I think while we have this out, we're gonna go ahead and do this. Okay. Um, this is this is the uh, <laughs> obligatory health advisory part of yeah. uh, of Heavy Titans. You want to wear an air, uh, a mask and have proper ventilation when you're airbrushing. Yeah. Doubly so when you're working with shades because you're just aerosolizing the paint right around you. So, yeah, these produce a lot of smoke. Do or, as we say, know. not as we do, right? Well, we've got this air 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 filter. It is pretty right ventilated. It's actually yeah. quite breezy in here, to be mm -hmm. honest. So, just want to let you guys know, double double heads up on that. And we need very very little of this. What we're going to be doing is going to do that the wash over the uh, black material, so yep. the weapons, the pants, all that stuff. And it's so little paint, we can almost just take this big brush again, and kind of just drop it in here. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, because otherwise, yeah. we're just going to pour out just more than we need. Uh, and it's it's gonna be super fast. Did I not clean my pot? <laughs> there we go. There was a little little blue in there. So. <laughs> so this is Drakenoff Nightshade. Drakenoff Nightshade from uh, uh, Citadel Paints. Citadel Blue Wash. Little old company called Games Workshop. Might have heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Show us what you got there. Let's do this thing. I did mention Squid Coffee on stream before Cobra. I need a Squid a Squid mug. So we're just gonna airbrush this here. Uh, and uh, all the cork is given given away. And the reason that we're airbrushing this, oh, I think there's definitely some paint in here still. Let me clean this out real quick. The reason we're airbrushing this, rather than applying it by brush, is because when you apply it by by uh, airbrush, it's going to be much thinner, and so it's going to tint everything and not darken it as much as an, as a brush wash would actually do. Uh, so this is this is kind of a trick if you ever want to just tint something a certain color. Um, and you don't want to have that really heavy wa uh, wash look, um, which can be totally fine if it's what, what you're looking for. So here, I'm gonna go get a bit more paint here, and let's try it again. All right, so um, this guy's pretty solid on the pants. And you're going mostly for the areas that we highlighted with the gray previously, right? Exactly. So like the weapons are gonna get this, this layer, it's gonna get them this nice black, and as mentioned before, this can be a step where you are done with those details. You can kind of, you know, stop that. You might be just want a little bit of, of, of edge highlighting. Um, and it's a good kind of checkout point if that's what you're looking for. Are we, are we going to get the skin here as well? Or is it, is it just we, the pants? Uh, just the pants. The okay. skin and the hide are all going to get a brown wash with a, with a brush. Got it. So that is that there. And you can see it gets this really nice dark, dark blue, black kind of look to it. Um, and that's the goal. Works with blue pants. Works with blue pants. Green skin. <laughs> yeah, this is just my, my black recipe, really. Um, so I do for all my black models. All my ad are painted like this. I'm trying to be... So uh, the really black similar. pants, they just have a blue tint to them. Yeah, that's true, actually. Right. Yeah, and to our earlier comment, back to our earlier conversation, all black should have some kind of color tint to it. To Absolutely. It. It's an opportunity to tie in to the rest of your army. If you've got a yes. blue army, if you've got a red army, like, your your black shouldn't be black, it should be have a red <laughs> tint. Or, you know, if you have a blue army, your black shouldn't be black, it should have a blue tint. Exactly. Kind of be coming back to these kind of key colors of your army. And uh, nothing's actually black, right? That's why Vanta Black was such a big deal, is because it was like actually, oh, right. truly, truly, <laughs> almost true, bla true black. Yeah. And you just you can't see. It. There's nothing that. There's no shadows that bounce off it. It just absorbs. Uh, no, it does it reflect all light or absorb all light? It absorbs. It absorbs, it absorbs all, light. all light. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you saw people trying to paint miniatures with it. They're like, yeah, this is not actually all that interesting. Yeah, and that's it's why. Black. It's, it's like, just a shadow. It's very yeah. <laughs> 
Not super compelling. No, not particularly. So that's not what we want here. Cool. And even, even here, I still have some extra wash, you know? It's just a light, light layer. Again, if you're doing this in big batches, as, as I usually do, you can have a bit more, but I'm feeling it. All right. I realized I missed a spot here. He's got a bit of squig hide on his oh, as okay. a tabard. You can always come back to that. Yeah, I can come back to that. Absolutely. Oh. What's a good PSI for GW washes? Um, 25, the usual. I think I don't really change my PSI for washes. I don't, you don't want it too low. You know, it's the same. You don't want it too low, too high. If it's too low, it's going to be all dribbly. If it's too high, it's just going to like go everywhere. And that's when you're really going to get nasty aerosolization as it like bounces off everywhere. Yeah. So I'd probably say like the normal kind of 25-ish range. Yeah, okay. we've got our airbrushes set a little bit higher because we have the <laughs> compressor in another room right. and a long, long hose. And so we lose some, lose some pressure in transit. Exactly. Um, Okie dokie. So now we move on to our first... Uh, brush wash. And um, it's nice and simple. We're just going to be washing the skin and the armor in good old fashioned Agrax Earthshade from yeah. Sibyl Miniatures. Um, and that's all that needs saying, really. We don't. And are we using a big brush, a small brush? A decently big brush, like a medium. Yeah. Like we can make one of yeah. these guys or something? Yes, that's ideal, actually. Yeah. So, like that size, this size. Okay. And. Um, we're just going to make sure it doesn't pool too much. This is, again, another chance for kind of customization, depending on how, how dark you want the skin to yeah. be or not be. Um, and you can, you can thin it a bit. Um, generally, I find it's fine just, just as is. So okay. I don't know how we can we share it, but we'll share it. No, I'm going <laughs> to pull out a palette. Yeah, there you go. Actually, can I throw this on back in the... Yeah, container? I can take that for you. Thank so you. So does this mean you guys are done airbrushing? Mostly, yes. Okay, I might uh, steal my airbrush back. When <gasps> you thief! That's fine. Actually, yeah, because the, the only other airbrushing we might do, I can just do. It's a teeny tiny step. And I'll make sure to mute myself so uh, people watching don't hear like a snake like hissing. Hissing in the background. Zach is yeah. frantically preparing for an upcoming project. Super secret project. Super secret. Do you want to talk about the super it's secret not project? It's super secret. Oh. Um, <laughs> I am working on... Uh, yeah, I am painting Ooh. up some stuff for Friday. Where we will be. Have we announced Friday? We have. We have. We'll yeah. be doing a, a, a <laughs> large. I'm calling it a midi marathon, a mini mid level marathon. marathon. I like it. Being eight hours long, all day Pacific time on Friday, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's gonna be a lot of me, Woo. it's gonna be a lot of Bridger. Yeah. And it's gonna be a little bit of Adrian and Brett. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna be painting up a uh, start collecting Beast Claw Raiders box. Heck yeah. And um, maybe we can we can do a little glam cam here. Oh, we can do oh, Zach's progress. Well, yeah, my progress. Nice check in. All right. We'll talk about why I need the airbrush Eight here in a second. Screen. So um, let's go to glam cam here yeah. if we can. Sure. Here's what we're gonna paint. Oh, there's what we That's are painting. Beast. Schmexy. Be snaga. Yeah. I was going to put the box on screen, but now I think that's going to look silly because we were zoomed in so much. So here you it know, is. I like it. This is what uh, this is what Bridger. <laughs> this is what Bridger and I are going to be painting. There you go. Looks oh, great, Zach. Oh, I can't oh, wait. That's now, so, so you can see that looks fantastic. Oh, right now, that. mine doesn't look so great. So here's where I'm at, and this is uh, one of the big guys. You can and zoom he, it he out. Looks, now. <laughs> he looks pretty ugly, and here's the deal. Um, I'm happy with where we're at so far, but I thought this would look much lighter with my process. So that's okay, because what yeah, I'm now going to do is I'm going to use some uh, some uh, of my favorite, one of my favorite paints, which is Minotaur Snow White. And I'm actually going to airbrush over top of this guy. And all these little variants that I did are going to show through because the, the paint is so transparent. Mm. Um, and it's a look I've done before. So as I was painting this up the, uh, just now, I was like, Hmm, I'm going to need that airbrush because I need to like, uh, And what's really nice is I'm going to Zenithal, basically. Right. And that's going to be great because his underbelly, is, the fur is going to remain a little darker. Oh, okay. So um, I'm going to get going on that. Uh, but I do it. need my... I'm going to steal my airbrush back from... You, from, from you Brett. Sound which good. means I'll probably also have to clean it. What? <laughs> Hurtful. You can immediately see blue on the needle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey now. <laughs> I thought we had another airbrush step, so I was... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, let's get a close-up on this wash here. Right. So we're going to this this brown wash um, with uh, good old-fashioned Agrax. 
And while we're here, we'll be, be a, bit, a bit wary of the squid guard because we just did apply that, so it, it's probably not fully cured yet. But honestly, if it was cured, we can do the whole thing. We can do all the skin, we can, we can certainly do all the orange uh, in this brown wash. And we're just applying it as normal, just make sure you don't get, you don't get too much pooling. And, uh, and that's it. If you do get pooling, if you do get patches that become shiny because you kind of let it sit there too long, you can of course do a matte varnish at the very end. You want me to get yeah. this in the muscle? You want it to pull in like the the muscles, right? You want it to pull a bit, yeah, for sure. So like here, you can see in the in the bicep coming down here, yeah. that is that's good pulling, like just a little bit, not too much, um, and it'll get those nice that nice kind of dark shade, and uh, you can see it's beginning to really blend together that orange and that green. Nice. Yeah. I feel like washing is so. It's Relaxing. so satisfying. Yeah, exactly. Like it's you know, like to come these together. hand, these hands, like the individual definition in the fingers just yeah. totally comes yeah. out when you. They're so wash the hand. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this on the squig hide here. I do wash my squig hide in brown. If you want to do blue, there's obviously a million ways to do blue, but I generally prefer like a dirty kind of blue. More almost, it helps makes the color feel more natural. This is a really vibrant kind of wild color, and so. Washing it in brown, kind of like Brett was saying earlier, helps tie it together with the rest of the model. And it's kind of this meeting of two places. Uh, you can, of course, wash it with like actual blue, and then you'll kind of double down on that. But I really like this, adding a bit of brown to this otherwise very, very, very bright uh, hide. Sweet, this is looking good. I feel like your, um, your orc sort of have this like orange and teal uh, that's sort of their pattern, mm -hmm. um, and they're complementary colors. But um, sure. yeah, having the the Agrax Earthshade to bring those two sort of divergent but mm -hmm. complementary colors together exactly can, can be really helpful. Yeah, I to I totally agree. So I'll use that, and then you'll notice I have also um, kind of this black and white that kind of helps tie it together. I have these two wildly different colors. They are complementary, as you mentioned, but um, kind of tying them together with these more neutral tones, the, 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 the brown wash, the black and the white, and it helps kind of bring the whole thing together w without being too, too out there. Like, it is pretty out there, but I think the right amount. Oh, yeah, and the, in the uh, wash on the squeak hide is doing a great job of getting in the crevice. Like, the squeak hide has lots of really great crevices. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And doing a panel lining in between the individual scales really nice. Oh, as so basically as just, we're basically just washing the entire model almost. Yeah, essentially. Could essentially. We, could we dip this, Adrian? How would you um, feel about dipping it? Dipping it? Look, as long as you did cleanup afterwards. Yeah. It's funny because I'm such a hands-off kind of person, right? <laughs> I'm like, we got to do it fast. We're not going to worry about the details. But then the washes, like, I get real nervous. The worst is actually washing. So the squigs are such big blue surfaces. Yeah. It's a lot of a lot of hand washing with a big brush, doing cleanup, mm. doing thinning, because otherwise it just sits in these really nasty kind of gloops. And I even still have to do kind of touch up afterwards. So I'm a little little reticent to say dipping. But um, if you dip, now dip responsibly, children. Dip responsibly. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I'm just about done with my first one here. You <laughs> look like you're done with your third one? I am done with my third one. Okay, cool. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> All right. That's why, yeah, that's why you have three and I have two. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you want to do my second one? I will do your second one, yes. Okay. Naturally. Hey, Adrian, how would you feel mm -hmm. about tossing to me from where you're sitting? <laughs> you oh, my gosh, Zach. <laughs> the spiky airbrush the tool. The spiky airbrush tool? I would love to. You I mean make this sure one? The, the cover is on it because... Well, that's not, that's not very exciting. Here we go. I've actually we loosened it. I'm just kidding. Everybody. Don't throw yet. Oh wait, I'm muted. Okay, here we go. Adrian throwing me the spiky airbrush tool. Oh, Zach's dead. Oh my, are you Somebody okay? Somebody call 911. Is that your eye? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just they, kidding, he's fine. They made this joke and I was like, no, guys, I'm fine. Look, I called <laughs> it. I'm fine. Why well, do you have to be mad? All right. Cool. Yep, so just washing, washing brown. Um, yeah, why don't we take another question? Yeah, let's do it. This one is from John Panino. What's up, John? Hey, thanks, John. Hey, guys. I picked up the Snaga box. Oh, yeah. And was wondering if you have any tips on creating weathered skin. 
Ooh. Would mixing crackle and regular paint work? Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that done. Um, man. That's cool. I've never tried it. You could do a, you could do a little experiment. Yes. Um, I definitely did an experiment. Man, I'm curious. Weathered skin. John, so are you airbrushing? If he's still in chat, let us know if you're airbrushing or if you're just gonna brush by hand. No, there's no way. You can't airbrush crackle paint. Well, you're not gonna airbrush airbrush. crackle paint, but some other ways (laughs) to to do weather. That's wild. (laughs) To do do weathered skin. One of the things we did a few streams back, Brett and I did something called basically like water weathering. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Where we more or less put droplets of water and then airbrushed over top of it. Right. And that, if you're building up layers, that can create these kind of like discolorations. Yeah. Oh, that's In cool. a that's really cool. fast, easy way with a tool that you already have. Totally. But that water. was a non-organic, on an organic surface. It was on concrete, yeah. but I, I would, I would. But it do could it. work for skin. Yeah. You know, what you could do, you skin. could do, you know, copper, copper verdigris for the skin too. <laughs> that would look good. <laughs> you could make your orc be snagas copper and then. Corrode the surface with verdigris. I That's a great idea. It. Listen, you can always do <laughs> copper verdigris. You always can. Uh, John says he's doing just brushes. Regular just brushes. brushes. Okay. Gotcha. So I, I think, look, I think just like uh, Brett said, definitely test, do a test model. But it could work. I don't know if you need to mix the paints. So you would, you would kind of pick the underlayer first, right? That's yeah. something you have to do with these crackle paints. Brian's talked about you know doing the crackle paint onto a flat black base and then realizing that you're gonna see the the black bare base underneath the cracks. So that's yeah. not what you want. So in this case, you'd pick like the 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 underneath tone, paint it like that, and then you can try mixing it with actual paint. I have no idea how that'll turn out, but you could always just apply it, and then you would do an airbrush. Yeah. And because it's raised, you'd hit just that top layer. Um, it's definitely interesting. I've seen people do it to like a, a smaller uh, effect for like a magma skin kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, and it looked it looked pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I guess my gut is that the crackles, in cra- the, the crackle paint is designed to produce crackles that are a little bit too large for, yes. you know, what I would normally think of yeah. as like blistered, worn, fluffing off skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, there's a skill to applying crackle paint. The more you apply, the larger the crackles, and so you could do sort of a thin layer. Yeah. Um, the trick there would be not having it so thin that it does essentially nothing, which is what happens if you paint it on too thin. Um, so yeah, if you, I'm sure if you honed that skin, skill to the point where you could apply exactly the right amount to achieve a very fine crackle, then it probably would look pretty good. I think so, I think so. So with that, right, yeah, where are we, at? we finished all the washes, and we're on to uh, brushwork, yep. uh, like actual brushwork. And uh, what's mostly detailed at this point, I think what we're gonna do, just to make sure we can kind of show you guys all the steps, is we'll pick our favorite orcs, and we're gonna kind of po- follow that one all the way through. Okay. Sounds good? Um, so, uh, do you have a favorite? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's this boy. Perfection. Awesome. Uh, which one should I do? I don't know. Now, wait, Adrian. Yeah, yes. If I may, Adrian, before you're deciding. Totally. I'll show um, this effect I did, and we'll show this again Friday. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I'll show okay. you guys this effect. I'm excited about oh, it. Okay. So this is what happens when you know you do all the underwork, and you're saying, "Ah, it's still too dark." I always blab and uh, get excited about um, Minotaur Snow White. So here's oh, yeah. uh, I'll show the more Minotaur Snow White. Thing. He's gonna he's gonna show up a little bit better. So too, way too dark. Not what I wanted at all. Sure, yeah. Um, now I, I would have had a couple other dry brush layers to go. But I'm thinking too dark. I wanted a little bit more like the box. So what I did is I took Minotaur Snow White, and here's oh. the look now. And so you can see things are still showing up mm-hmm. underneath. You can still see variation underneath of the fur. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it, it still shows up, but now he's now he's light. That's sexy. I like and that. This is, yeah, this is that looks I'm, great. This is what I'm going for. So, so sharp. Uh, and oh, then like the <laughs> the gradient kind of naturally in his his, his face. Uh, this is not. Is that is that Pete's this face? This is not Pete. Okay. Um, if you're wondering what what Adrian and I are talking about, uh, we found out that one of the Morn Fangs looks like Pete from uh, Goofy fame, a Goofy movie, the, Disney's Pete. <laughs> it's like the, the bad guy of Goofy, basically. The classic Disney character Pete. Yeah. Yeah. He has kind of like a Pete look to him. Uh, we'll show it off a little more on Friday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is just a preview, just a preview. Uh, of things to come. <laughs> Exciting upcoming content. It's too good. All right, so we've picked our favorite orcs. You picked that one. I picked. I yep. picked this one. And uh, we're gonna do straps. Straps on straps. straps on straps. 
Uh, so we're going to pick, and this is a, <laughs> cover your ears, Zach. We're going to use a craft paint. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I love this paint so much. This is, let's get a camera on this. <laughs> yeah, I want to see this. Uh, this is De uh, Deco Art Americana uh, Fawn paint, and I've used this since I was a kid, literally. And I just love it. It's just this amazing, like, tan color that, um, it's basically Xandri dust, but not terrible. Like, I hate Xandri dust. It, like, it's kind of yellowish, but then when you wash it, it almost looks greenish, and it's so weird. This is Fawn. It's quite thick, so I would definitely recommend thinning it. But, uh, this is what I use for a lot of my leathers and, and Oh my gosh. Like so, look, if it works, it works. You know? Yeah, if it exactly. works, it works. And you know what? It's yeah. cheap. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. Yeah, um, just put it on the paper. That's yeah, I was gonna fine. say, cool. Um, so I'll do that, and you can do this on a wet palette. I do recommend thin thinning just a teeny bit. And we're gonna go ahead and just hit up all these straps uh, with this. This is my smaller brush. You know, as long as it's not um, shop tea bone. <laughs> oh my I'm gosh, fine. this is this is very true. I'm this fine. is very true. The thing with craft paints, well, that's not true. The, the thing with this paint is it's the opposite of that is Shrupty Bone. It's it's very, very it's thick. It's very thick. So okay. you can do one layer for sure. But, one uh, thick coat. Yeah, I don't recommend it. I see, like, it's not even like flattening out on the palette. It's just like <laughs> staying this like <laughs> it's domed bubble. It's amazing. So viscous. All right, let's All get right so in this here. is we're doing we're doing rubber, or not rubber, leather straps. Exactly, so like the straps across yep. uh, the Bandolier. chest. Bandolier. Bandolier. And this is what I mean, like the orcs before had like suspenders, which you know, who doesn't love suspenders? But they're such a pain because they're tiny, there's like four of them, and they're crossing over, so it's really tough to get to. Uh, but this, it's nice and easy. I've officially uncorked my last orc. Um, it's just easier to get to. Sorry guys, I, uh, I will mute. That actually wasn't an airbrush though, that was a snake. <laughs> but it's, I, I put it outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna mute. Uh, so that when I airbrush, it doesn't sound like a snake. Thank you, I appreciate that. But again, if anyone was concerned, that was a snake. Have I told you Mel has like a deathly fear of snakes? You know, that's so interesting. Um, <laughs> maybe we can use that to uh, get, a, get, get a wedge in between uh, our, our <laughs> wives' horse, horse oh plants. Because Meg and I always talk about like how that seems like a weird fear to us. What? Of snakes? Yeah, I know it's very Let's common, but here. like, I, I'm just like, I, I'm not sure how people are... Snakes are terrifying. Okay, so we found out that Adrian also well, afraid of snakes. Well, I am afraid of snakes. Uh, What's terrifying about them? You're like 100x bigger than they are. Uh, yeah, well, what, what about like a Black Widow? I'm like a 1,000x bigger and she how can many, still kill me. How many Black Widows have, have humans killed? Um, look, Probably in the millions. You know what How I would many say? humans have Black Widows killed? Yeah. Probably like a couple thousand. Look, I can't speak for the sins of my ancestors. But, uh, I'm well, just saying, I'm sure these creatures that you're talking about are a lot more scared of you than you are of them. Here's, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. It's like... I'm... <laughs> <laughs> What's the way? You're afraid of being in pain. They're afraid of yes. losing, getting stepped on, and, and their life ending in <laughs> this is true. a terrifying this is moment. True. Look, I have nothing against snakes. I just think that they're terrifying. You know why? Because I respect them. <laughs> ah. Oh, that's. I mean, that's a great way to turn around. Which is actually the same relationship I have with, with, uh, or at least I used to have with horses. <laughs> it's also the same relationship you have with Vallejo Blue Green. Blue Green. I I'm terrified by it. But I respect <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, I love man. it. Oh, sorry, we have Crisper Snake in chat. <laughs> He's a little upset. <laughs> he said, come on guys, we're just like listening. snakes. We're not so bad. <laughs> oh, Meg apparently loves snakes. Yeah, I hmm. think, I think, uh, she's being controversial. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah um, I don't trust right. the Pfeifers. The P-Pfeifers. <laughs> Shall we, we take we, another question while we're doing uh, while we're doing straps? Yeah, sounds good. Brett's like, should we definitely stop talking about Shh. snakes and <laughs> answer these real questions? <laughs> uh, thanks, Taylor. Uh, any thoughts on a war trike with both the Iron Gob and Road Killer D3 mortals before and after charging plus combat? Yes. I. Uh, is this a new so is this a new upgrade for the war trike and yeah so the, there's the new book this is new new relics and new um uh warlord traits and so uh yeah just basically you're you're doubling down on doing these mortal wounds on the charge i think it's awesome especially if you are um either blood axes or speed freaks so you can fall back and charge again just keep getting those procs every single time uh i'm a fan of it 
Is it Beast Gob or Iron Gob? Iron Gob. Uh, Iron yeah, Gob. Okay. Because Beast Gob is uh, a different one. I, I think it's so. What does Iron Gob do? Um, it is. I think that is another. I think they're both. Yeah, they're both sources of mortal wounds essentially. Got it. So the Death Killer War Strike doesn't do mortal wounds on the charge, I believe, and this basically gives it those those two sources, if I recall correctly. Um, there's so many cool combos that you can do. Honestly, it's it's awesome. Yeah, that I'm. Uh, you know, we've not we've not explored the full depths of the new orc book oh, by by any measure. Come. There's there's lots more to come. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Cobra. Hey, Titans. What's up, Cobra? In honor of your wedding anniversary, Adrian, will you tell us a happy, quirky story from the wedding day, please? Congratulations. Oh man, Put me happy on the and spot. quirky. Uh, funny and quirky. Um, this is a good question. Knowing you and Mel, I'm sure there were quirky things that happened. Oh, there right? were for sure lots of quirky things. <laughs> this is so tough. Um, we actually took these really funny pictures, uh, which uh, have not made their way onto the internet yet. But we, um, so we we got married in um, in like super inland of San Diego, for those of you kind of who don't know the area, in El Cajon. Uh, and so uh, my aunt and uncle have a place there. And it's like, you know, right up against the hills, it's super, super hot. And it basically has like this mini barn at the back with, with a mini pony. And with a mini uh, pony. yeah, mini super pony. cute. And so there are these like super like old kind of farming tools, like old pitchforks mm. and things like that. And so we did all, like all the cutesy photos and the whole thing. We also did like, uh, you know the painting with yeah. the yeah the, yeah, the black and white oh, totally super stoic so there's a, like with a, the pitchfork there's a bunch of hilarious photos from that that That's have great. not seen the light of day yeah. uh, but they're amazing and so we we took a bunch of those because of course we're a couple of a weirdos so I thought you were gonna say you posed like it was the zombie apocalypse and you were like making your last stand oh that would like, be good all too your wedding yeah, guests yeah. Were like, <laughs> <laughs> well we could just like. Like the photos were great, but like after you've taken like a hundred of them, then we're just kind of like, yeah, all cool. right, we're over it. Like, we want to, we want to do it. Um, and like twenty years from now, like those are the ones that you're gonna be like, oh, yeah. remember that day that we, <laughs> yeah, you know, posed like goofballs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Can I ask? Um, oh, Mel has more. Actually, that's true. And and this yeah, is Zach. this is a question. Uh, Mel's in chat, and so this is a question for her and for you, Adrian, and totally. for anyone. I heard you use the term mini pony. Yeah. Is this a, uh, my understanding was a pony is already smaller than a horse. Correct. Is a mini pony, are you just like using, a, not a double negative, but a, or is that actually like it, an even smaller it, it's pony? It's a thing, it's like a genetically, it's like a dwarf pony essentially. It's tiny. Uh, so it's about this tall and, you know. But it's full grown at that size. This, that, and that's as old as big as it's going to get, yeah. Um, so. It's a, they, it's a thing. Are it's they a, useful for other they, things other than festivals and circuses? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. Like they're kind of like hugs and bulldogs and other animals. Like little that I Sebastian love. from Parks and Rec. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, they're just like you know abominations of nature, and they're adorable. So, <laughs> uh, miniature horse. That's what it is. That's the technical term. Miniature horse, miniature not horse. miniature pony. Yeah, but Mel calls all horses ponies. Because so. a miniature horse, a miniature pony would be like a dog. Even size. tiny. Well, I mean, a miniature pony would be a baby miniature horse. <laughs> In which case what? they're like, <laughs> what teeny. is going on? Like what a is full, happening? a full is big, right? Fulls are big, but a, 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 a miniature horse when they're ponies, tiny. But no, Mel, Mel had a good point. The other, the other two ones, which are, so I love um, Ballast Point beer, and so we got ah. two of my favorite, my favorite beers, Victory at Sea and Sculpin, big, big, big ones. And things got a little wild. May have done a keg stand for the wedding. That was keg amazing. stand at the wedding. It was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. And um, later on, uh, one of my good friends and my brother, we also we had a wedding at a at a poolside, and we're all like sitting afterwards. We're kind of like eating our like din wedding cake and everything is delicious. And then all of the corner of my eye, all of a sudden, I just see my my two groomsmen, my 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 brother, and then my friend Doug, just sprinting full length into the pool, diving, and everyone's just like. It's just happening, and next thing you know, <laughs> everyone's in their, in their like underwear and swimsuits and jumps in the pool. And it was like this whole like part three of the wedding at like two a.m. in the morning, where everyone's in the pool at the end and totally crazy. So uh, <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Wow, well, that's quite that's ha that's happy and quirky. It's definitely happy. And I hope quirky. that met your criteria, Cobra. Yeah, there you go. You got like four stories there. 
All right, so I finished my bone. I think I think the models have varying d uh, degrees, so yep. I'm going to kind of continue to the next also, material. I'm also done with mine. Oh, perfect. So what I have, what we have next to do is that's a metal panels. Lots of metal for sure. Uh, yeah, let's do the metal next. So for that, we're going to be using. Oh, I've got a belt. Is that, is that <gasps> a should that belt? Be, should that be? Uh... Yeah, actually, you know what? Go ahead and do the belt. Okay. I'm realizing. Can we get a close up on this real quick? Yeah. Um, this I have these teeth to paint. Oh, sorry. I've got these teeth to paint in the bone, and then also I have a couple, I think these spines on the top look like they could be in a bone material. So actually, let me let me do that real quick, and you can do your belt. Um, sounds good. Yeah, let's take another question. Um, thanks, Broken Chef. Thanks, let me scroll Broken down. Chef. Oh, I can't see it. Uh, just a second. Technical difficulties. <laughs> um, Adrian, I'm going to paint... Oh, are you going to paint models for your wife? Good man. Good By man. the way, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, so, it's funny. So now we're on to re renovating Mel's Sylvaneth. And the paint is not that's a, that's a That's a good word for it. It is. It's like, you know, it was her first army. A glow up, a refresh. Yeah, it's like she wants a new scheme. She can. She's a much better painter now. Um, has a better sense for the game. Um, and the problem is not going to be the painting of it. Because we're both actually hyped to paint them. And, and she's hyped to paint them. But it's also like the... Re, it's like the building of all the new models. Doing the rebasing. Right. She also wants to do... So she's doing bioluminescent theme. And so yes. on the bases, she wants to do like mushrooms and things like that. Oh, that sounds so which amazing. It's going to be awesome. Um, so again, as soon as I get my, my FEP from my printer, which uh, Brett's going to help me with, uh, we can get some more of those, some of those like bits printed up for the bases. Nice. So you're going to just print a bunch of extra sort of foresty, <laughs> bioluminescent bits for, the, for, the, for bases. Exactly. But the okay. whole thing will also have like... Are you different add them to the models too. Um, I don't know if we'll add them to the models because yeah. the models they kind of have like these these outgrowths coming from them already and these branches yeah. that can already have that effect on them. Right. But she really wanted to have like this forest bed of like I love it nocturnal kind of uh, fungi kind of coming up. Yeah, right? cool. that's awesome. I love that idea. All right, so I've actually finished this. Um, the next step is going to be metal. Uh, the first model we're going to do is iron hand steel. Okay. Again, could be any sil silver. Don't yep. really care. Um, could be craft store. Could be. Uh, uh, well, I actually do. Paint. I do enjoy a good Martha Stewart silver. It's, it's quite good, actually. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> Does Martha Stewart have a line of craft paint? Oh yes. You have not oh been to Michael's gosh. recently, my friend. Oh my god. So this I'm one. Steal some of that. Yeah, go and steal some. This one doesn't need half as much thinning, but um, you know the deal. Yep. All right. All right, and you want me to do. Weapons, right? At this point, yeah. So we're doing weapons, certainly, we're like doing blades. Buckles. We can do buckles. Uh, I also like to do a bit of scratching. But I've got I think... this like armored metal tabard on this guy. His tabard oh, is cool. metallic. Is that you want metal too? Oh yeah, totally. Let's do it. Let's like do armor. it. He's he's got heavy armor plates protecting thin air. Yeah, I know, right? It's like I don't want any bullets going between my legs. No bullets between my legs. No bullets in the five hole. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yeah, and what's um? So this is I like this I like this silver color. It's not too bright. It's not too exactly. Um, you know, I'll zoom in on the. End. Some of the kind of gunmetal ones can just end up too dark. And yeah. Then some of the silver ones are just way too clean, and you have to just. We will wash this uh, if it's cured in time, but uh, you don't really need to. It's a nice kind of in between. Yep. And some some of the metallics don't cover super well either. Yes. This looks like it's covering really well. There's two things that I use Kinda Games like Workshop for, pretty much above all others, and it's washes and a couple of their metals. Um, so this silver I love, and then obviously Retributor armor because they just have such good coverage. For exactly the reason. What color is retribu Retributor armor? It's a it's a gold. It's a gold. Color. Uh, like I would okay. say it's a gold. Some people wouldn't because it's actually kind of a very bronzy gold. Yeah. Um, but it's like the Stormcast color essentially. It's almost like a cool gold. It's, it's almost like... It's pretty cool, I, I agree. Not like... Um, Radical? I mean like temperature. Dope gold. It's gnarly? It's not like a dope gold, although it is. <laughs> it's like, it, it has like a more silver in it than yeah. you might expect. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely not just a straight up, uh, straight up gold. It's like a... What's the name of the really bright gold? I don't remember. Probably like sanguineous gold or something. 
I actually think that it is something like that. It probably I, is. It is related to sanguinary it's guard. It's what everyone does cust custodes in, right? Oh. Um, no, custodies usually get done in retributor armor, I think. Retributor armor, okay. So like, that's also the spray so paint that's that they that comes make. in a spray, yeah. Yes, that's the retributor armor. Which is also the same gold they use for my Necrons. You have mm, gold Necrons, yeah. Yeah, my Blinktrons. Blinktron, nice, <laughs> okay. So I have these kind of chunks of weapon that I'm applying silver on. Uh, and again, this is a way of kind of breaking up the material, adding in some different colors, but also keeping it easy to do. So a lot of, a lot of cheating going on here, it's nice. And then uh, last kind of step for me on, on the silver here, I think I have one more plate to do, but I'm gonna just scuff up this beautiful black armor by kind of doing edge highlighting, and it's kind of scraping in. Chipping. And yeah, doing chipping. Now again, this is kind of the style that I like. It, it can be very stylized. If you do thick chipping, it can be more realistic if you take a small brush to it. But either way, I like it because it looks really good uh, at a distance in particular, and it's so easy. This is another technique that I've just started experimenting with. Oh, yeah? And I like, you know, like, you can watch, again, there's tutorials for all this stuff all over YouTube, but... Naturally. Um, you know, and you can, like, really go in depth where you, like, paint a black mark yes. on your armor, and then you paint like a slightly smaller silver mark. Watch your head there, Adrian. Oh, sorry, sorry. A slightly <laughs> smaller silver mark inside the black mark so that the black kind of shows through around the, on the edges. Exactly. And then maybe you do like a white in the center or something. Like, there's like le layers, levels of chipping that you mm -hmm. can just kind of take it to the nth degree, and and, um, <laughs> and I started there because that's what the YouTube tutorial said. Oh, of and course. I was like, oh my gosh, nope. this is so much work. And so I appreciate that, like, the version of chipping that we're, like, if you're doing 100 Orc Boys, you're mm -hmm. not going to do that with no. every single one. and you don't need to, You don't honestly. need to. Like, yep. we obviously are in a unique situation where we put our models in front of 4K cameras and blow them up in front of thousands of people, but most of the time when you when we play, play models and paint models, that's not how we see them. Yeah. It's like, I hate when you're watching a play or an opera and and it's one, that one that's like televised and like zoom up on the, on the actors and it looks like so garish and terrible. I'm like, no, that's not how it's supposed to be viewed. Yeah. It's supposed to be viewed from the audience. Yeah. The makeup is designed to be viewed that feet way. away. Yeah. It's the same way here, you know? So... I don't know. Yeah, I struggled with that a lot. When you like take photos of your models, uh, super yeah. close, right? And then you post pictures of them, and you're and you're like, oh man, my model doesn't look great. But then you're like, oh, that's because it's the lighting's weird and the, exactly. Yeah, I've noticed. I think I think some very good painters will post intentionally down resed photos. Interesting of their models. Like you try to zoom in, like see the work, and you you can't. It's not a very high resolution picture, um, which is fascinating. Like it's it's no truth. Like it's it's not anything against them, but it's very tactical. It's um, it is like really disappointing to paint a model and be like, oh, it looks great, then get some really good pictures in a light box. <laughs> yeah, and then you as soon as you get start looking at those pictures, that's what you're I'm like, talking about. Yeah. Oh God. That's yeah. awful. Yeah, this, like, is, this awful. is horrible. This is painted by and, like and you know, a child. So, right. I know. You know, something I'll add, um, Adrian, when you do the shots mm. for the games, lots of times little pieces of hair show up on Oh them, my gosh. And yeah. people in chat are like, oh, can we get the hair off the models next time? <laughs> well, I've done shots now as yeah. well, and you do not see those pieces of hair. No. While you're until working. It's too like, late. I, uh, I know this is the <laughs> wrong crowd to be telling this to. We need to tell this to a. Uh, on a Thursday night, but yeah, yeah. you see those hair pieces, like, they, they are not there. <laughs> and they're not <laughs> there. You, you, you're sitting there looking at the screen, yeah. and it's like, there's hair, there's dust, there's like a, you can see like a fly, a fly's leg sticking off of it, and you're like, oh my gosh, I saw none of that. Oh, my favorite, my favorite um, was when we did the first coverage of the new Drakari book, and it was like the first time that I put my raiders on the battlefield in like forever. And so there was like a literal gigantic cobweb just <laughs> swinging from the model in like 4K. And it's just like, oh gosh, it's so bad. I'm going to go <laughs> back and watch it. that now. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's like, a, it's like another Aether sail uh, just made of, of spider webs. Just to, yeah, it gives it a little, that's how it gets a, 
you know, an extra extra oomph on its advanced <laughs> role. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. Enhanced other sales. <laughs> yeah, you pay points for that upgrade. You did right? pay points for it. Yeah. Um, so while we're still kind of working on the metal, I'm going to yeah. jump over and apply just a real quick a second metal, which is not here. What metal, what metal are we looking oh, for? Oh, no, it's right here. So this is Balthazar Gold, which is a very uh, inappropriately named paint, in my opinion, because it's a beautiful bronze slash copper color. Um, more of a copper than anything. Like, look at that. That's not gold. Yeah, it's not. It's copper, and it's yep. it's gorgeous. So I'm just going to add just a, just a teeny bit of that. Uh, adds a bit of diversity, especially when you have metal on metal. I love alternating. Yeah, so I've got, I've got this, like, hand... This whatever it's not. This is not a chopper. It's like, I, that, I know. What right? the heck is this thing? It's uh. But there's like multiple metals there, and it's going to be great to have a contrast color for that. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the idea. So this is like a, a gun metal, and then a, a sort of darker coppery bronze color as a contrast. Precisely. I like it. And you don't need much of it. Like I'm going to add this on just a couple spots, and it's just going to totally break this up. Give it that diversity. I'm going to give him these dope, like, copper earrings. Copper earrings? Copper earrings. Yes. I was trying to figure out what material they are. I think they maybe are supposed to be stone, but I kind of like them as copper. Like, he is looking fine right now. Do you wash your metallics afterwards? Yes, I do. Yeah, me too. I almost always, yeah. So the silver I'd wash. For orcs, I'll do the, the silver in a black and a brown. Um, oh, nice. Okay. And then the the other stuff, I'll just do a brown, right? And the brown makes it gives it a little look, make it look a little rusted, it, right? It dirties it up, yeah. very nicely. Um, yeah, I think I'm I'm literally almost done with the copper already. Like that's it. So we're just kind of again we're coming in, we're finishing up the details. It's uh, we're almost there. Oh, by the All way, right. I said auric gold was the one we were thinking of. Auric. Auric gold. A U R I C. Not orc. Auric. Auric. And it's not like O R R U K. Either. Yeah. Or, yeah, no, yeah. Oh my gosh. Auric. A U R I C? A U R I C. What is that? Like, so, like, mm. so, or, or, like, um, <laughs> like metal ore? Like, like gold, like in, in French, gold is actually, oh. And oh, so oh, it's, it's oh, kind yeah. of derived from like Latin and French, right. uh, those, the, all those kind of Latin the, languages. Um, periodic table. Yes. Gold is AU. AU, exactly. So it's that uh -huh. kind. Of, it's that kind of gold. Exactly. Periodic gold. Periodic gold. Elemental gold. <laughs> oh shoot! I missed this guy so has this uh, wristband. That also needs to be this color. All right. How's your? This is great. Coming. He's coming great. Uh, super happy with how he's coming out. It's awesome. Yep. I'm he's, um, yeah, I think I'm about done with the with the gunmetal. Oh, oh, I'm gonna do the palm, the the handle of his pistol. Oh, perfect. And he's got a little uh, ring on the bottom of the handle, so it's like a keychain. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm imagining he's got his truck keys. His truck. I keep my hand, you know, I can't lose that. I can be a responsible truck boy. That's right. It's funny, um, people, This I, I don't know if, there are, if you, you guys are watching, but in the Orc channel over on the Tabletop Titans Discord, they're discussing some of the rules that we've been playing and uh, the fact that the truck boys rule, which allows your truck boys to get out after they move, um, <coughs> it only works on keyword knob, not keyword knobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is what? what the knobs have. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, however, I did double check. There is a rule that says keywords, the plural of a keyword, yeah. does yeah. work. It works for the keyword. It works, yeah. Even though it's hilarious because they don't pluralize it like a normal word. It's knobs with a Z. With a Z. Which is like, we all know that's the or that, plural that's the of plural. knob, but you know, but definitely like, some rules is written. People are like, that's not correct. Knobs blah, blah, is blah. not the plural of knob so, unless it's N O yeah. B S. Not yeah. saying that that's what the people in Discord were like. I think this is a rule that is not well known at all. Um, but yeah, it's in the core rules actually. Oh, it looks awesome. Didn't didn't know that. Got some putty on the bottom. He got putty on his foot. Um, Okay. Definitely don't want him getting stuck. That's minus <laughs> one to charge if he's got too much putty on his foot. Yeah, you have to spend a CP to, to ignore that. Um, okay. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to switch over to this uh, 
this new gold. Yes, Balthazar gold. Yep. And I am going to be doing a little bit of white, as we mentioned. Okay. A little white to kind of touch it up. This is really just for sigils, some cloaks, uh, like uh, secondary cloth. But for mm -hmm. now, for mm -hmm. today, it's just going to be uh, these symbols. Um, so this is uh, going to be another like two minute step. Shall we take a question? Yeah, we've got one more from Cobra. What's up, Cobra? Titans, I have a request. Tracking confirms that my package for the Good Talk Room arrived. <gasps> oh! Because Brett and Mel are present, will you open it, please? Uh, well, oh, Mel is in chat. Mel is in um, chat. Um, maybe we can ask Zach to see if that's. Yeah, if you don't mind taking a look. Uh, we actually have a f number of. A number of packages on the Good Talk we table. We have so many packages right now. Mail time on Thursday tomorrow is going to be... I'm excited. Uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> I think there's a lot of uh, Titan Watch in there. I'm hoping there's a lot of Titan Watch in there. All right, so you're painting white? I'm maybe? doing white. It's an off-white. In this case, this is Bone White from uh, Vallejo Game Color, which is their non-air brand, brand. And... Uh, I'm hitting a couple of these kind of fake teeth on the side. Is that another tooth? Yes, it is. And he's got this super cute little belt buckle with a little skull on it. So um, I'm just hitting up that. And that's, again, that's, that's like literally it, I think. Mm hmm. Oh, his yeah, wrist so has is, a thing. Do you, um, and then are we going to do a wash over the. Over the uh, leather straps? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. that's essentially going to be the last step. Um, is we're just going to wash that. Nice. Yeah, we'll have to wash the metallics, wash the straps. Absolutely. These boys are looking good. Right? I'm feeling this, it. Um, this copper color that we're doing here is, is it matches the orange really well. Mm, right? It yeah. complements it nicely. Yep. And it, and it works because we don't have too much of the orange. On some of my models where I have a ton of orange, yeah. because it's so similar, I actually will avoid it, and I'll just do just do metal, a uh, silver metal uh, with it. But in this case, it, it kind of complements it enough because they're kind of far away from each other. Yeah. They're separated. I like it. Yeah. Hey, chat. This is uh, Zach. Cobra, if you're there, don't super chat. Just let us know. Um, is this addressed to Brett and Mel? Am I looking for their names? Because uh, I don't... Uh, we we had a lot of stuff is just like tabletop titans or something like that. So I'm not sure what I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, we need to know how to identify your package because there's like seven packages over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think I remember seeing a new one. I think I'm thinking of Saturday when we got the other package from you. Uh, a bunch October. a bunch did just get here, right, today or mm -hmm. actually even while we since the stream is literally been yeah. A few. Um, but none of them say like Brett and Mel or anything like that. Totally. All right. All right. So do you want to get started on the next step? I think I will. I think so, I'm a little bit behind you, but that's fine. No worries, yeah. Um, so we're really close to being finished. Yeah, I'm just checking. Uh, we, the black is looking good, but very, very plain. So we're going to do a little bit of highlighting on that with the gray. And in this case, I'm actually going to use the exact same gray that we used to, uh, to um, do the highlights in the first place. These are essentially edge highlights? Edge highlights. On the black? With cold gray. This is an air paint, um, but just matching the gray that we used earlier. And we're just going to hit up some of the edges of these folds and uh, boots and materials and things like that. And it gives it just a bit of definition. So let's take a look. I'm going to do that also. Oh, perfect. I'll zoom in on you. Yes, let's do it. My head's not in the way. Cool. <laughs> So again, we're just kind of doing a bit of an edge highlight here, trying to be gentle. This is one of those steps that can easily look really bad when zoomed in. And guess what? That's totally okay if it looks good on the board. Um, yeah, do you have like any tips for edge highlighting, Adrian? I do. So one, make sure you have, you don't have very much paint on your brush at all. So it doesn't, like, extra doesn't glom on. And then the other thing is, when you, when you edge highlight, you don't want to try to paint the edge directly like this. Rather, you actually want to paint with the, the side of your brush like this and actually just be kind of going along. And what this does is it removes the need for any accuracy. Uh, you're just going to be getting that nice kind of thin layer. You can see I'm actually going to be, again, moving the model around a ton to just kind of find 
where if I can just move this, th this brush parallel to it, the paint just comes off in this really sharp, oh, and I just bought the really sharp line without me actually having to have any like skill per se. And uh, it just kind of assures that it's nice and sharp. One of the things I got stuck up on the first, uh, or yeah, stuck on the first uh, couple times I tried edge highlighting was I was thinking I needed to hit like every single edge. Right. Like the entire length of it. And weirdly, it actually looks better if you <laughs> don't do that. That's right. Like if you, if you hit every single edge, it looks fake. Exactly. It looks way better if you like just sort of pick certain edges. And the, the strategy of like which edges to hit Mm -hmm. Is a whole other other piece, that's but an like art form, yeah. that, yeah, and that's about sort of where would the light come from and what the rule of cool comes into play as well. Mm -hmm. But like um, intentionally only hitting certain edges goes a long way to actually, you know, it saves time yeah. and it looks better. Exactly, I totally agree. Less is more, and it's going to help everything else just pop even more. So just a little bit, looking for those sharp edges, those raised surfaces. Yeah. Um, on and you're mostly doing this on the black, the black, the pants, the armor plates. Exactly. Sometimes with pants and cloth, I'll actually do a little cross hatching, where I do these little, like almost like stitch patterns, where I go across, and then I'm like line, 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 line. Um, this guy's so busy, I don't really need to do that. I do see a little bit of a fold here on the boots, so I'm trying to get just a little. Sharpness there, there, looks good. And then maybe just a bit more on this gun. Feeling it. That looks really good. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Anywhere it's just kind of looking plain, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a bit more. Beautiful. I love it. Okay. Right. Yeah, this is like a great way to just sort of, you find an area that needs a little bit of visual interest, yes. and then you can add a, add a highlight there. It's a good way of putting it. You don't need to add another color. You don't need to like have a detail be there. You can just, just put an edge highlight on a fold in the cloth. Right, and basically it's like, hey, look here. Look and here, like, oh, that's, that's right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Draw attention to it. All right. Well, I think it's time we can uh, we can come back okay. to our washes. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and unwash this. Now this is a, a case where if you wanted to do more detail, you could do a bit of a brown uh, airbrush on some of these these parts of the uh, cloth. Um, but you can also just just wash it like this. Nice and easy. Yeah. Yeah. This craft paint, like it looks really sort of. It doesn't look like leather right now. No. Uh, on the straps, but I'm imagining once we add some earth shade to it, it'll it'll look amazing. Exactly. And uh, one thing I like about this paint is it it reacts really differently to each wash. Um, so I will often use uh, skeleton horde as as a wash for my kind of leather stuff. What is what color is skeleton horde? Skeleton horde is a contrast contrast paint actually, and I like using contrast paints as a type of wash. I don't like applying them, you know, oh, just to the base color the way they kind of advertise it. Do you but if, do you thin them? Um, sometimes. So I don't like snake bite leather, funny enough, because right. it's too thick. It's too overpowering and it's too splotch, splotchy. But skeleton, uh, here we go. Sorry. Oh uh, <laughs> no. It's fine. Skeleton horde is relatively thin. It's a pretty mild contrast color. So yeah, we're just gonna apply this Agrax. It's gonna kind of bring these back down to the level of everything else. I'm doing the metallics here as well. Is that okay? Oh yeah, that sounds great. Hit up those metallics, darken them, muddy them up. Weathering and chipping are like two of my favorite things. Yeah. So fun to do. It's it takes it take, we've talked about this before. It takes it's hard to like get up the nerve to take your I mean <laughs> yeah. I, I guess with orcs it's a little different, but sure. as a tau player, I was like, it's hard to get up the nerve to take your freshly yeah. painted, you know, <laughs> battle suit right off the line. Right. And you like just spend all this time painting it and the panel lines are crisp and then you're like, All right, take a deep breath. Time to <laughs> time to go in there with my chipping brush and mess it all up. It's so true. 
Uh, but yeah, with the orcs, it just it just goes really well. Yeah, my my fists, I have my redemptors are pretty fists, weathered. Yeah. But everything else, I like. I was gonna weather them. I was like, I'm gonna make them super weathered, like they're entrenched, like fighting on yeah. our four fortress. I, I just couldn't do it. I was too scared. Checking out, yeah. So they're still pretty pristine right now. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. That's the, I guess the nice thing about weathering is you can you can just hold off on it. Like you can paint your army, have them be clean, fancy, yeah, nice, exactly, pristine, and then do all the weathering later if if it strikes you, if you mm. feel it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what a lot of this is about, is we all have lives and other things to do other than Warhammer, sadly. It's a good stopping point. Yeah, so be realistic. Get to those stopping points. All right, so what's next after our Earthshade wash on our metallics so and we're, uh, straps? We're effectively there, honestly. Did you want to do um, the hatching? The hatching? <laughs> The, sorry, the, the stencil? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. You want to do the bonus round? Let's do bonus it. Bonus round. Bonus round. So, uh, real quick, I want to show you guys. The reason I picked this guy here is because he has this black um, shoulder uh, shoulder guard here. And um, I do love me some good goths. And goths enjoy um, checkers. So we're going to give them nice checkers. checkers. So let's, let's zoom in on here so you guys can see the stencil. This is one of my, uh, my stencils that I made myself. And um, this is actually, oops, coming down here. It's so blown out for you guys, but uh, it's a set of four, and we just need a little section of this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just take these scissors and just cut off a little section, like so. And I'm not gonna do this one. I'm gonna let you. Yeah, no let worries. You do this one. And so I've gone ahead and cut that little strip. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the stencil. This is the border right here. So we're just gonna get that out of the way. And very carefully, like relatively carefully, you know. What I'm realizing this. Even this is like way more than I need. Cut this here, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. And it's mostly coming out. I have a few of the little kind of segments that are still there, so I'm actually just gonna use my finger to try to get them to attach. Oh my, my gosh, finger. it's so tiny. It's so. T oh, this guy is on the other side. That's why. All right, cool. And sorry, where did you get these stencils from? So I made these. You make them. Yeah. So I you have, have like a cutter. Yeah, we have a a, a cricket. A cricket. Um, yeah. yeah. So we actually we got it from like Michaels or something, or Amazon, and uh, it's used for making stickers. But a sticker with no like design on it is just a stencil, and it's great. Uh, this is the same kind of stuff that Fallout Hobby uh, uses and stuff like that. I do have my Etsy store, but it's kind of like semi closed for now because it's just a lot of work. All right, cool. So what I was doing is I was just removing kind of extra bits. And I'm going to go ahead and take this and apply it onto the shoulder, lining up as close as I can, but not being too concerned about it, because these are orcs after all. And with my thumb, just going to apply this here, like so. Very nice. So now you guys can kind of see oh, that's that contrast. Amazing. And, yeah. so the, and so the idea is, this is essentially a mask for an airbrush. No, exactly. Gonna, so wherever you this. can see the black, that's the that's the shoulder showing through. So we're going to go ahead and airbrush over that. And it's only going to put these like perfect little squares there. This is another case where I'm going to go ahead and grab some silly putty and do some really minor masking like this, yep. and maybe like this, and uh, we'll be good to go. All right. So, in fact, what I might do. Let's see. Oh, that's good. Adrian, you don't have quite as much hair as me. I'm but, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, yeah, it's it's uh, it gets old. It's a skill. It's a skill. Right. I, I'm not good at it. In fact, last week, you know, we showed a so video tough. of 22 minutes of footage I took of the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some uh, paint in my airbrush. This is Vallejo. Uh, this is Bone White from Vallejo Game Air. This is back to the air paint. And I'm going to go ahead and spit out some right here. It looks good. And uh, I'm just going to use a, a very ancient masking technique, which is just put your, th your finger put in the your way. Put your thumb in the way. Exactly. Uh, and here we go. So we're just going to apply it. With these stencils, or with any stencils, it's really important that you don't apply too paint. You don't want it to get wet. Because then it's going to start to bleed through yep. and totally ruin your stencil. Yeah. So really, really, really thin coats. Lots of air, not a lot of paint. Exactly. So you can kind of, you can probably hear, I'm just kind of, Spitting it out just a little bit at a time, getting a good good chunk. A little bit more. All right, cool. And um, we're gonna get rid of this masking tape. And here's the reveal. Fingers crossed. 
and then grab it from here. Ta -da! Oh, it's beautiful. And we've got this That's lovely amazing. checker pattern. Um, what I'm going to yes. do real quick is I'm going to get some black, and I like to do, once again, just a little fade yep. that is partially stylistic and partially ad adds a bit of weathering to it. Yep. Now this, I could do a bunch of uh, sh shoulder pads in, in succession, and that's what I would totally normally do. Yeah, this process, it feels very time consuming, but if you're doing 10 of these oh, all yeah. in a row, it's really not that bad. Yeah, it's really not bad at all. It's not. And keep in mind also all the steps that you can do or not do, you know. Yep. It's, it's kind of th having details that you can opt in and out of whenever you need. So, oh, there's my head again. So, there we go. I'm gonna do a bit of black and just kind of create this nasty fade here. Yeah, that looks so good. Just dirty it up, dirty up those gubbins. I feel like this is the signature Adrian look right here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The checker with the faded, the faded checker. Mm, I'm loving it. Blue, green, and orange. All right. <laughs> You've just given away the secret of the Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola recipe. That's that's oh, this is me. This is entirely me. There's nothing more to see, guys. <laughs> We're done here. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. How's your boy going? Uh, he's he's looking good. Um, this Agrax is really kind of tying it all together, like we talked about. Right. Um, I think I do need to hit some of these uh, bone spikes mm, on the yeah. on the back of the. Um, the the, the, pelt, squig, yeah. the squig pelt. That's yeah. what I realized with mine. I because they don't look different at first, but then as you as you get through, right. like it actually it really helps break it up a lot. Yep. Um, yeah. All right. So, what else? Is that it? Are we done? Are we done? Honestly, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'll point out details you can do. Yeah. Um, in this case, like this is this is more than table ready. Um, but details you can do is you can go back to the leather and you can do just a bit of edge highlighting back yeah. with that bright color. You can do some scales with your, your top level color. So for example, in this case, Vallejo Blue Green. Yep. And you can do a bit of uh, highlighting of the skin. Again, probably with your base skin layer. Um, I've, been, I've been actually using just this, uh, this is olive green. Yeah. Um, so same kind of idea. So some skin on edges of the skin. Yeah. And that's kind of it, really. Like, that's, that's basically everything. <laughs> so, um, Oh, is that? No, that's the tooth. That's the tooth. Okay. I thought I had like a stencil in there for a second. Um, Can you talk a little bit more about the stenciling? Because I'd never seen that before. Yeah, totally. Uh, like, is there is 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 buying a Cricut and designing your own stencils like the only way to get these, or do you have places that you can recommend people go to for stencils right. that are like independent third party checker patterns? Yeah, and like there that? are. So so. Um, uh, what is it? Fallout Hobbies is kind of the, the most well known. Okay. Um, and you can you can buy their stencils, and they have all the kind of classic stencils. If and when I get my my shop up and running, you can check it out. It's on Etsy. It's Pandora's Forge. Um, and so eventually, I'll come around to actually kind of restocking everything, um, and just kind of googling googling around for uh, what's the word I would use? Uh, I mean, sticker sticker stencils. Really, like the thing is, at the end of the day, these are just. It's just sticker paper. There's definitely some companies that are trying to make it sound like it's more than that. But it's yeah, just sticker it's just paper. sticker paper. <laughs> and the fanciest thing is the cutting part of it, right? Right. With the designs. Um, so that's generally what I would look for, honestly. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll get these back in stock uh, for sure. I know, um, you know, Harlequins was mentioned in chat. Yeah. Um, is that oh, okay. also how you did your? That's all my Harlequins diamonds? were done with this. Yeah. Uh, that was actually the first kind of need I had for this. Was like. Yep. I wanted to do this stuff. Mel and I were kind of looking at like doing, we had talked about doing stickers for a while. And then I was like, oh, you could totally use this for a stencil. Use it for stencils. And because yeah. we kind of had so many things we could use it for, that kind of pushed us over the edge of actually going in and buying it. And we got super into it. So um, it's nice. At a moment's notice, we can just kind of cut out whatever we need. Do you do any custom decals also? Can you do that with the Cricut? So I haven't tried decals per se. Um, and the decals are generally something that you'll like, you'll print. And then the ink gets applied, so it's more right. so you need like a certain print print and ink on right. a certain type of paper. Not so it's much that they get the cut out. Yeah. Out, yeah. Um, but you can do like, for example, we did on the Mega Gargants. We had stencils that have kind of more fancy designs. We looked at like the tattooed bellies and right. things like that, and that can function like a de decal. Although I'm so impressed at how fine a detail you can get yeah. with those checkers. It's tiny. Like, why do you almost even need decals when you can just make a tiny itty bitty? Yeah stencil 
and then airbrush over it and right. achieve essentially the, the same look. So there's a couple things. That's super interesting. One is like you can get a very fine detail, and I've I've done a lot of experiments to kind of figure that out. Yeah. The thing with checkers, it's funny, is to get a true checker, you actually can't do a stencil. Right. Because if the if they the squares meet. are touching, then yeah. they'll just fall out. Right. When you're getting this tiny of a detail, um, the the gap between the squares is almost uh, un unnoticeable. Yeah. And they're small enough that you actually get this like mesh network, <laughs> and so the whole thing doesn't just tear and collapse. Yeah. The bigger the bigger stencils, like on some of my big vehicles, those are super fragile. Those right. are like one use stencils, right? But these smaller, the smaller ones, ones are, are actually are, tougher. Are weirdly yeah. more durable. Because it's all these smaller yeah. holes that are also supported by all these other co connections. So yeah. you can get away with a lot more on these small designs, which is, is the opposite of what you would think. Yeah. So when I'm like I'm thinking about this from uh, standpoint of tau sept markings. Oh yeah. Um, the GW kit uh, has them as red, mm. uh, which is for VR law. Right. And the old kits came with them in black <laughs> and white. Yeah, yeah. So you can get like black, which is sort of generic, white, which is tau sept, red, mm. which is VR law. But if you like want to play literally any other sept, you're like, and you want to be sort of codex compliant, exactly. you are stuck either like hand painting them basically, cool. freehanding it. Um, or making your own stencils slash decals. Yeah. And so I'm like scratching my head, how do I do custom decals? It seems yeah. like a project, but making a stencil and right. then airbrushing yeah. seems like, because then you know, it perfectly <laughs> matches. Because if you print out a decal, it's yeah. of course not going to match the color of your Yeah, eye. and then you have to try to melt the decal into the paint and get it yeah. to work. Uh, with this, we can have exactly the exact same tone. Exact same tone of, cool things, of the right? paint that you use. Yeah. yeah. We should, we should, That's uh, a cool idea. We should talk. All right, future hobby stream. <laughs> future hobby stream. Upcoming content. All right, we have a box here from um, Ooh, Cobra. From Cobra Commander. This is for you and Mel, I guess. I suppose so. We'll see. Yep. Um, so we're gonna do some mail time. Mail time. Tear here to open. I can follow instructions. <laughs> um, it's squishy. Oh, sounds good. It's gonna get paint all over. <gasps> <laughs> it looks oh, like a galaxy. <laughs> what is this? It's a blanket. <laughs> uh, it's a blanket. It's a galaxy blanket. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have no idea. It's a ah! space galaxy blanket. Oh my gosh, it's Balfi Gothic space blanket. That's amazing. It's Balfi Gothic. Oh, wow, that's massive. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so nice. Hey, you want to hold that side? Yes, I will. So now the question <laughs> is, what kind of ship is that? Well, it's definitely uh, Imperial, right? Yeah, it's Imperial. Some kind of some kind of cruiser battleship, but the <laughs> uh, and they're fighting chaos and oryx. Oh, it's a three-way. Oh, three -way they're battle. all orcs. You're right. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. This is great. And Thank you, Cobra. And it's this lovely tabletop times purple. And on the it's background. purple on the back. This looks like a custom-made blanket. Yeah, I'm that's super, pretty amazing. That's, Thank uh, you. Uh, that's great. Yeah, and Mel has been like, saying like, we need to get blankets in here. We have like. <laughs> This awesome like chill space and like yeah. a million pillars. We have like no blankets, so there you go. Yeah, and no blankets. <laughs> yeah, so now we'll see Bridger. Bridger will get uh, yeah. an opportunity to cuddle up with his techno pillow. Exactly. And I can cuddle up with my Battlefleet Gothic blanket. I, I, that's thank so you, perfect. Cobra. That's great. That's so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cobra. <laughs> I have. I realized I do have one final step I'd like to do before oh, okay. we close out. Yeah, sure, sure. This is not on the model itself. This is for our bases. Oh yeah. So real quick. Let's put these boys on a base. I want to talk about that. So um, let me let's let's jump to this zoomed up camera for a second. Yep. And uh, of course, here we have uh, your standard Games Workshop base. You can see where I tore the boy off. Then we apply good old fashioned. Um, AK Muddy Ground, which we've been kind of preaching about lately because we're just all obsessed with it. Brett, Brett just tried it for the first time recently. You know, right? I had my first Muddy Ground experience <laughs> and it was transformative. It really yeah. is. It's just, it's amazing. Uh, it's so easy to work with. It's much cheaper than Citadel. Yeah, uh, I was impressed by, I, yeah. I both like the product more than the Citadel mm -hmm. texture paint and there's like, like 20 axes, the volume it's, in that can bonkers, for you know twice right? the price. I had walked past it in game stores and I was like, ah, whatever, it's probably expensive, whatever. But it's actually great. So here it is applied and dried, and uh, I use this as the material for all my bases, but then I still go ahead and paint over it. So what I have here is a couple uh, bases for us to paint um, quite briefly, and uh, the reason I'm saying briefly is because that's the whole point of this, is how do you get your boys uh, from one to done super simply? So we're gonna hop you know what? I'll do your base because Zach yeah, has the airbrush. Yeah, because Zach stole my airbrush. Um, and it's going to be super yep. easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop in a bit of white here. Now my boys are on sort of desert basing. 
uh, this like muddy, uh, this mud brown kind of color. So what I do, I got this white. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. Make sure there's not too much water in there. And I really like to get this sort of lighting coming from the center of the base. And you get this nice kind of vignetting effect. So again, we're undercoating, even for a base. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're kind of working our way out. A little bit more, a little bit more. Looks good, looks good. Awesome. And I'm just gonna, I'm actually just blowing air on it at this point just to help it kind of cure a bit faster. And you can already see you have this really nice kind oh, of glow, great. right? Yeah. Like, I can it's almost, almost, almost that. like, you know what I imagine? Like a spotlight. Yes, that's it's exactly like what it is. They're standing on a stage and there's like <laughs> a spotlight coming down from the ceiling, right. <laughs> highlighting them. It's definitely another case of like, this makes no sense in the real yeah, world. There's no, but it just looks so it's, cool. It's a really you know cool thing. Yeah. Exactly. So then we're going to use another Vallejo paint. It's called Mud Brown. Mm -hmm. And uh, there we go. This is from Vallejo Model Air. Gonna go ahead and apply a few drops. And apply it uh, pretty heavily, honestly. There we go. Oh, let's get zoomed in on this as well. Yep. So you can see, continuing the theme, uh, we're actually keeping all that under shading still. It's nice, strong, rich color. So that we've got that there. And then the final step is we're gonna sort of reinforce this vignette, which is sort of the uh, the fading to black around the edges. It, it comes from actually um, yeah. an old film, right? And it's something that we come to associate as uh, like a, it's, it's, it's classy. Old timey. It's old timey, it's classy. A lot of hipstery films and even independent games nowadays apply this artificially. It's, um, it's an Instagram filter. It's an Instagram filter, exactly. So we're gonna take this black and we're gonna go around the edges, because we do black bases here, Zach. Ooh. And uh, it's gonna give a bit of a, a, just a teeny bit of a fade again towards the edge of it. Like so. Adrian, I went through a phase where I didn't want to paint the edges of my rims of my bases black. I just wanted the like virgin plastic showing through. Wow. That somehow like the idea of paint was was like <laughs> aghast. Yeah, I was like, I, I can't, I can't handle that. And so I'd actually like I would overspray and then I would go back and like scrape off the no. paint and like sand it with really like <laughs> multiple passes of like more, finer and finer sandpaper. That's amazing. And each, <laughs> I don't do that anymore. That's so fantastic. It was, it was, uh, it was a phase. It's so I, neurotic. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So again, I'm just drying these so we can uh, glue these bad boys onto the bases and see them on the glam cam. But that's the bases. That's how I do all my orc stuff. Um, some of them will have more gubbins on them, but uh, but that's it. Do you paint your eyeballs? I do actually. Um, all you like generally, if you want, uh, I have some black contrast paint here because mm -hmm. you can just dot it on. Oh, okay. But uh, also, don't feel like you have to. I, you know, I've literally never used contrast paint. This is my this first is your time. my first contrast paint experience. It's exactly it's oh, I just glued my hands. This is a good stream moment. <laughs> anyway, so uh, getting some glue. It's not what game uh, what the James intended it for, but it's uh it's what it's good for. Ta da! All right, let me get this on the glam cam. And uh see this boy. We might need to zoom it back in again. Nice. He's ready for crumping. He's ready to get crumping. All right, let me, uh, let me glue my base. Sounds good. That's so fast. I mean, that was unpainted. Yeah. That was just primed. It was two, two hours and 17 minutes. And I can tell you guys, <laughs> one boy. If, he, if he had not been talking and, and answering questions and chatting this whole time, it would have been, you know, an hour less than that. <laughs> well, I, I, we, Brett and I owe Adrian an apology because before the stream we were like, how many of these should we do? No, no. And Adrian's, like, tell we, them. Adrian's like, we can do 10. And <laughs> Brett and I are like, you're crazy. We'll do five. Yeah, we could have yeah. done 10. We could have done 10. Maybe, mm, I don't know. We did two. <laughs> <laughs> but so here's, here's the thing again, just reiterating, like we, we did all the big colors and details on a bunch of them. The, the final step, that takes a lot, a lot of time is, of course, those those details. So just, you know, keep in mind how much time you want to spend on it. You can kind of see the di different, the various stages that you're getting. Oh, fugs, I love those. <laughs> he's, he's doing the code for the emotes, even though I don't have the emotes here. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, 
These look awesome, these boys. Yeah. Uh, Super into it. So when are we going to see these in a game? We're going to see these in a game very soon. Tomorrow, in fact, over on our sister channel, Tabletop Titans. Uh, I'm going to be playing John. This is going to be at the usual time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm going to be playing uh, the new Orc Codex against the Drukhari. Definitely the toughest foe that the Orcs have played thus far on the channel. So looking forward to that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's coming up tomorrow. This will be sort of like a true competitive. The first couple of yeah. games we played with the Orcs were, were whack. You know, we were trying out different things. Exactly. We were feeling it out. Yeah. We were putting them up against sort of the litmus test of Space Marines. Yep. And now we're going to... They're working their way up. Yeah. You know, we, Iron Hands was was pretty straightforward. Then we had a great game against White Scars, which definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. And then tomorrow is the real challenge. Uh, Drukhari, and uh, I've seen John's list. It is nasty, uh, so it's going to be cool. Wait. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And then next week here on Hobby Titans, uh, we're going to be doing some terrain, right? Yes, that's right. So you guys aren't rid of me yet. I'm going to be back next week with a continuation of Orc Week Part 2. Orc yeah! Week Part 2. <laughs> and we're going to be making Orc terrain, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Again, focusing on accessibility, on uh, uh, cheap materials, on making things that look really cool and are a lot of fun to paint. Getting to it done cheap, getting it done quick. Yes, exactly. Um, and if you've seen uh, the terrain that we've been playing in the War Zone this week on Tabletop Titans, mm -hmm. Uh, that that's this is going to be more of that. So exactly. It's going to be the same style, the same kind of quality, but it's it's a very you know this is Adrian's terrain that he makes, <laughs> um, and it's a very different style than Zach's, yeah. uh, but no less amazing. So, uh, <laughs> but but yeah, it's a, it's going to be a different style and a different sort of tool to have in your toolbox if you're getting into terrain making. It'll be tons of fun. Come on and uh, check it out. We have uh, here next week, uh, same time. Yeah. So, oh, one more super chat from Kaldorf. Uh, thanks, Kaldorf. Orcs, can't wait to go back and watch full stream. Yeah, this is a, this is a fun one. Um, we went from zero to painted minis in, yeah, exactly. in, a, in a live stream. This is great. Yeah, that's what it's um, all about. Zach, did you want uh, me to open yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we, just we also have one more from Magnus I think we missed. Oh, okay. That was right before Kaldorf. Magnus, Kaldorf. great. Let me check. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, Magnus says, what up, dudes? Glad to see the Super Chat feature is up. When can I become a member and get a cool badge <laughs> next to my name? Trying to catch them all. Heck yeah. Um, so the members will be, we want to kind of build it up, same way that, you know, with Tabletop Titans, when we do unlock memberships, we want it to, to be actually worth something. We want to make sure that people who become members have something that they can get, and we're kind of building yeah. up, building the channel, finding, finding the voice of the channel, and, um, yeah, so the way you can get your badge is by helping people to find the channel, like and subscribe <laughs> it. It's all about growth right now. We want to build the community, build the channel, and then once we feel like we have things going enough that we, we can kind of give back to you guys yeah. enough to unlock kind of membership stuff and not just be like, well, now you're going to have members and not really give you anything. We don't want to do that. We want to do it right. So that's kind of where we're at on it. It'll happen for sure. Yeah. Um, so definitely like and subscribe, share the channel, right? Tell, yeah. you, tell your mom. We're, we've, we're working on a couple of different new content streams. So we started with the live weekly yeah. uh, uh, hobby, uh, hobby live streams. Mm. Um, and we're, you know, this seems to be in a good, good, good pace and a good stride. Uh, but we want to add a few additional content streams to this channel. Mm. And once we get those up and running, then we feel like we can justify, um, you know, having a membership up there. So Absolutely. It's coming. So much good stuff coming. I can't even wait to tell you guys. <laughs> it's going to be cool. Uh, so, so let's open Let's open some more mail. We have more packages. Um, Zach, do we know who these are from? These are actually from Megan. <laughs> oh, from Megan. Oh, all right. Okay, so that's how you know we can open them now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. We're like, are we, are we just going through all the mail? Okay. From <laughs> Megan. So this is Redbubble. So Redbubble, if you don't know, is a you can order a variety of products with your yeah. custom logo on it. Totally. Um, do you want to open one? Mmm. Oh, why not? It's from an independent artist. And from an independent artist on Redbubble, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no! Oh, my gosh. Oh, no! So you just upload a an image, and you can get <laughs> that image printed <laughs> on pretty much anything you want. Uh, this is a pair of... I'm gonna... Hold on. Yeah. This is a pair good. of socks with... <laughs> <laughs> with faces on it. Oh my uh, you want to put this on the... Here, let's put yeah. this on the glam cam. Oh my god, it's amazing. There we go. Meng made this, she posted this in Discord. It's like a tileable texture of, of our faces. <laughs> it's uh, amazing. Here we go. No. Oh gosh. We need to refocus it a bit. There we go. <laughs> That's amazing. It's too good. I can't even. 
There we go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sock. Look at uh, these faces. It's a sock with faces on it. Oh my god. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Good bridge. Who, who do these actually belong to, Zach? Are these uh, I don't your... know who gets the socks. Who gets you have the to socks? For it. You have to wear them um, on the Good Talk, too. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I, what's in yours? I also have. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. It's the same I'm texture. Scared. It's definitely the same texture. But I have no um, idea what it is. What is this a tablecloth? It's oh, an apron. it's an apron! <laughs> my God. It's... Yeah, it's, we already decided that that is, that is the, uh, the guest non apron? team guest apron. That's, that's beautiful. The, that's the guest apron? This is yeah. literally the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Uh, Brian's going to come back and we're going to be like, hey, <laughs> we want to have you, you on the hobby stream. Uh, here you go. <laughs> it's too good. And we won't tell him until like 30 seconds before we go live. Oh, and we're just like, here, you have, to, you have to wear this. That's amazing. Mike is still good. This is incredible. Uh, <laughs> oh I love gosh. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, thank you, Mike. That's amazing. All right, and then there's one more here in a box, also from Redbubble. My guess is it's a thing with pictures, of, with faces on it. Uh, I guess the yeah. question is just like, what is the thing? Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Um, maybe a <laughs> mug? Maybe... Maybe a sailboat. A s <laughs> Big, make a beautiful maybe, sail. Maybe. You unfurl it and there's all our faces. Oh my gosh. A lunchbox? Oh. A lunchbox. Right? What is it? Does Redbubble do lunchboxes? <laughs> oh, and even better. Uh, this oh. is... Uh, oh, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> this Monster. is... A 500-piece jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> uh, here we go. That's too good. <laughs> right there. Oh my god. So, um, yeah, if you ever wanted a 500-piece jigsaw puzzle <laughs> with some really creepy faces on it. You know what I it. think I want to see, like, on a, on a Q&A, Adrian, where it's like yeah. you, John, and Bridger, and we know it's going to be a long Q&A, like a Saturday. Yeah, we're just I working just on want, it. I just want John and Bridger to just be working on this puzzle the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you know, the next time we do a... 20, you know, a 12 hour live stream, hobby live stream. Mm. There's like the active hobbyists on right. camera, <laughs> and then in the background, there's just like people working <laughs> on, a, the on a jigsaw puzzle. That's amazing. Uh, oh, that's great. God. And then we can like do regular check ins on the puzzle crew. Yeah. Like, yeah so, yeah. how's the puzzle coming? Well, I got all of the like Brian's beard pieces <laughs> collected over here. Yeah, how do you do, the, like, how do, you do a tile glasses puzzle pieces like that? over here? Tiling, it'd be impossible. Yeah, it's going to be a super yeah, hard puzzle. Really cool. You'd be like, what do you uh, think it's going to make when you're done? We're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know like 120 <laughs> copies of each of our faces. <laughs> it's too good. Well, Meg, uh, touche. I, I don't know what, how we can one up that. <laughs> no. I feel like this is a, uh, an awful and amazing prank to make us open these on air. <laughs> Um, Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. All right, so uh, we've covered what's coming up. We've covered mm. uh, <laughs> lots and lots of mail. Lots of mail. Um, I think I think we did it, Adrian. I think we did it. When can we next look forward to um, some hobby content? Should we tune in soon? Yeah. So this coming Friday, um, Zach is uh, leading an effort to build an entire. Get, start collecting box of uh, Beast Claw Raiders in one day. So Oof. this is going to be our eight-hour mid... What did you, what do you call it? Mid-a-thon? Mid midi. Marathon? Midi marathon. Midi? Midi like, marathon? Like midi music? It's yes. like, uh, not <laughs> like midi music, not, more like mini. dress lengths, right? Mini, midi, and maxi. It's not a maxi I had no marathon. idea if midi was a thing. That's crazy. It's like it's down to the knees. Medium stream. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to do that in eight hours, uh, approximately. Uh, this time, hopefully, we won't run afoul of YouTube's 12-hour limit. That's <laughs> oh, true. oh, that is not happening. <laughs> uh, so that's coming up on Friday. Right, cool. um, next week, we've got our first um, sort of long-form pre-recorded content video coming that's out. Right, that's right. Uh, that we are working frantically on this week. Uh, <laughs> look forward to that. We're, we're very excited for this. This is a new content stream that we're hoping to do more of. Uh, and we'll see the first of those coming out next week. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then next week on Wednesday, you and Zach are making, uh, making squirt gun. It's going to be awesome. Orc, orc terrain. Some sort of orc terrain, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, there's, there may be squirt guns involved, maybe some other bits involved. It's, uh, it's a messy and fun process. I'm super it's excited. It's exciting. Awesome. All right. 
Um, yeah, so thanks all, all of you for joining us. We hope you had fun. Hope you got lots of hobbying done in the meantime. And until next time, always be creating.